three, two, one. G'day everyone, welcome back. It's a special night tonight because technically a few weeks ago we turned four. So I decided to invite Mr. McDermott back to the refinery. How are you, man? It's been a little while. It's been a minute. It's been a hot minute, my friend, and I am ecstatic to be back tonight. It's going to be a good one. I'm excited about what you've got to present me, my friend. You've been doing some fucking work. I know, man. I've been putting in the, in the yards. Yeah, man. I've been you've putting got, in the yards. You, you've got me excited. Mm. You know, you've sold it to me. You had my curiosity. Yeah. So basically what we're going to do tonight, everyone, is Megalithomania 2. Now, we're doing a few different things tonight. So there will be a video portion of this one. The video is currently recording. Have a, we had an epiphany, mate. We realized, because the problem in the studio has been we couldn't get ourselves in the frame. However, we probably, you probably don't want, we don't want you to see us. And you do probably don't to want to see frame. us either. You don't need to see us. Exactly. We've it's got, bad enough when we see us. Exactly. We've got heads for radio, okay? So what heads, we decided. Bodies. It, yeah. <laughs> we've got the whole shebang -a bang for radio. <laughs> so what we decided is basically the camera is recording the screen in front of us. And I'll also release the slideshow onto whatever I can release it on social media platforms, etc., for those to play along. So if you if you started listening to this and you don't have the slideshow, check Facebook. I will have posted there. Okay, it might help. What do you think? How do you how do you think the slideshow is going to work at this stage? Is it going to auto play or is it? going to be a series of photos that they can scroll along with it's a series of photos that they can scroll along with okay so basically i've got my magical clicker here, yes so i can go do whatever i want right? oh nice yes so Very professional triff um i've got it's a it's a laser too oh and the pointer but it doesn't yeah. work on the tv it doesn't no. i was about to say does yeah. it work on no, the tv it doesn't work on the tv you read we, my mind but we can point the laser at stuff uh <laughs> but yeah basically man we had a bit of a discussion today the 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 uncanny valley in this podcasting slash video audio world is when you are deep in a uh, like I've noticed it when I'm doing the stuff with Zoom like I did with Jock the other day and Muhammad you get caught in the visuals and it's hard to have a presentation conversation that was that was the term that I, I coined this morning and. We're going to try and do that. So, yes, this is a presentation that I'm presenting to you. However, we're going to cover some old old ground, but we're going to come back to it with a, with the twist of all that we've learned and some of the new stuff that I've learned. And we're going to look at things from a different perspective that I don't think you've looked at before. You may have. And we're just going to have a discussion. However, I've got points that I want to bring up and discuss. So, when we, I'm not going to say slide one, slide two, you know. We almost need like the turn the page chime remember that one yeah <laughs> yeah so i'm not going to do that however it'll the conversation should unfold in that manner um but yeah i'm looking forward to this man i think it's it it, it is an evolution and obviously it's you know april what a bumper month for the podcast as far as the guests are concerned you know you, muhammad you've, back to you've back. amazed me with the guests that you've you've pulled in here man muhammad blew my mind with the stuff that he was bringing out yeah and then we had double day coming down doubling down yeah doubling down on double day exactly <laughs> and yeah he's a super cool dude and i really look forward to talking to him again and look there there's more in the works let me i'll just i'll just put it like that i'm i'm in negotiations with some other really cool guests to continue the work that we're doing we'll have colin back as well colin was an unbelievable storyteller and I'd like to hear more of his story as well. Yeah, I've I got to admit, man, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. I'm not sure quite why I'm here. You know, <laughs> you know, it's it's always good to be in the room where you're the dumbest person in the room. So <laughs> that's that's good. Maybe I'm maybe I'll move up from here. That's yeah. all good, brother. I'm I'm stoked that you're here. You know, I mean, I'm here, for, to, I'm here to learn, everybody. Well, the thing, and that's what I said to you. I'm going to take you on a ride tonight because I've expanded, and we're only going to focus on um, four different things tonight. All right, because it's going to be enough anyway. You know, yeah, because Triff's got 90 fucking slides. 90 <laughs> slides for four things. Um, so, so there, yeah. may be a, there may be a slight amount of uh, experimentation with this one as well in terms of knowing what to put up. We may skip some. Yeah, look, I, a lot of it is, 
in in some of the subject matter, a lot of it is just different perspectives of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I'm not going to say slide two, slide three. Yeah. You can, you know, can you hear that? You might, can you hear the click? You might be able to hear the click, um, but that'll be me changing slides. However, let's get into it. Let's, yeah. Quit, Mega, quit banding around. Yeah. Come on. Megalithomania 2, an unlocking the code interpretation. I like that because that is all it is. Remember, we always have said here that we know nothing. And anything that we say, don't listen to us, number one. But number two, <laughs> it's just a perspective. Right, so the ideas that I'm going to share with you tonight, the knowledge I'm going to share with you tonight, is me synthesizing an immense amount of data mm -hmm. into my interpretation. Your interpretation, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I like it, man. Like we've already, always said, the um, and I think what's what the everyday person has realised is the the institutionalized information that was presented to us in such an absolute way for so long yeah it was just it stands on a, on a on a pillars of sand yeah exactly it's just you it's know? just their perspective it's just their perspective yeah they just say it in a absolute way when it, and it's a steered narrative that's the other thing too that's the other you know and this is so we're going to go to four places tonight now i thought i'd take it easy on you i'm not going to do any weird stuff right we're going to go Gobekli Tepe, Baalbek, Egypt, and then we're going to come home. Back to Australia. Back to Australia. And I'm nice. actually, I've actually got photos. I'm going to, for the first time, show the best stuff that we found at Gympie. Yep. And talk about it. Yep. I'm also going to um, put up photos of the imprint at Ginnabar. Mm -hmm. uh, I took you, we, we saw that on the yep. way back from Gimby that day. Where, where we uh, played with the snake. Where we, yeah, where, <laughs> <laughs> what's in that puddle? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Triff, but I'm going to get it out. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a lizard. Yeah, it wasn't a lizard. Oh, that's, that's a, <laughs> uh, some kind of tiger. No, it was a tiger. And it wasn't a tiger snake. It's like a keelback. Yeah. But ke they call it like an eastern tiger or something. Yeah, something like that. It Night wasn't. tiger. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to go there and we're going to, and obviously some of the Stonehenge stuff and then Gosford Glyphs, obviously, because that's come into it. And just some of the other work that's been going on around that as well, because I think that's important to share. So because we're only going to four places, what I thought I would do is give you and the listeners an understanding. When I say, and when we've said on this podcast and before, that there is a global megalithic civilization that once existed, the first slide we're going to look at is actually the known megalithic sites, the countries. Let me just run through them. <laughs> Egypt, Ethiopia, India, Indonesia, Israel, Japan. Laos, Lebanon, Micronesia, South Korea, Syria, Tonga, Turkey, England, France, Germany, Spain, Bahamas, Costa Rica, Cuba, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, United States, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Peru, Greece, Ireland, Malta, Netherlands, Russia, Scotland, China's not on there, and Australia. So they, basically they everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically everywhere. When we say there was a global megalithic culture that is on every single continent, okay? There was a couple there, like China's not on that list, and they've definitely got some. There's so many. Antarctica's and not on that Antarctica's list. Antarctica's not. But, you know, that's the, that's the kind of stuff that's coming with global warming as we get glaciers melting. Well, we're getting more evidence the ice is building and it's chasing the poles but that's not for tonight <laughs> so where we're going to start go beckley tepe okay i thought a map up there just to give people an idea of where it actually is nice what i want you to look at too is where it is in relation to syria because that's going to come into play a little bit later yep but when you see there each one of those red dots there is a different site okay so you've got hasman tepe sefer tepe tasli tempe navali kori Urfa, and then go back to Tepe. Yep. Now, I thought we'd start... Pillar 43. 43. Right? We know about Enclosure Pillar 43. D. Enclosure yeah. D. Nice. We did, it, we did an extended podcast on Pillar 43, and it's actually one of our better ones, so go back and listen to that one if you haven't already. And basically, the more that time has gone on since we did that episode, the more and more confirmation that 
Gobekli Tepe in itself is actually definitely astrologically aligned, right? Mm -hmm. So then that then leads the evidence of that uh, Sweatman and Six Rikas came up with on their paper is more and more likely that that is actually what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just to remind people that it's basically a pillar representing the cataclysm 12,800 years ago in whichever form that took. Okay. Um, the solar flare thing seems to be ga ga gaining momentum at the moment. I'm yep. going to give it, I'm going to give it its due diligence. I've decided um, about. See, the thing is for me too, and I actually I haven't run this by you off the off the mic, so I'm going to run it by you now. Yeah. So we're saying that, uh, you know, Halloween is potentially us celebrating the end of the world, right? Yep. We've also heard along the way that the meteorites come out from behind the sun during that time during the torrid meteor stream at the end of October into November, uh -huh. the meteorites are coming from behind the sun. What if it was both? What if a bunch of stones flew through the sun or something and dragged a, a massive EMP pulse or a solar flare with it? You know what I mean? Everyone's going, it was a solar, it was solar. What if it was both? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it's hard to say what the effect, say a comet, flying close to the sun could have yeah but definitely possibly without someone to say no yeah possibly or just a massive coincidence mm. and to, to add to that the other day because i was actually thinking about how you could have like a comet breaking up or multiple um particles coming at the earth mm -hmm. and i was thinking about it and i thought well what if something big meteor comet mm. you name it whatever cosmological entity you want to have mm. or one of these like omuamuas that just come out of nowhere mm -hmm. or what if something that comes from outside flew in and when it passed through the toroid media stream picked up heap of crap along its way hit something some, yeah hit something and it's so it now it's created a stream mm. of debris Mm. that's then hit over that thousand odd years of the younger dryas yeah yeah, yeah. sort of thing you know yeah. I, that was just a little theory that i a little thought that i had the other day and that that could definitely be the case i i'm i obviously the hiawatha crater didn't make it onto the list tonight however that's something we're still waiting on results for that basically at the end of the day the hiawatha crater we don't have conclusive ice cores to say what the dating is of that crater um However, if that's the smoking gun from 12,800 years ago, yeah, then it could be both, right? And remembering, I suppose, things to take away from Gobekli Tepe, you can see the alignment, the astrological alignment up on the screen there. Yep. That's probably the most pertinent one that we've got. Uh, that That's the most proof that I see, okay? And, you know, that the circle that the bird is holding is actually representative of the sun, Obviously, there's the handbags there, the multiple different types of animals, right? And the other thing about Gobekli Tepe, I actually, there's a Pillar 57 is very, very fascinating as well. I haven't seen any work specifically mm. on Pillar 57. See, 57, yeah, that's not in the mainstream. No, no. So basically, during this research, I, I, I zeroed in on it and I basically started to take like three or four pictures of every pillar. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, hang on a minute, we've got 150 slides just on Gobekli Tepe. So... I, I held back. Might need to back back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but there's 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 more to discover at Gobekli Tepe. Um, there's more to think about there. Mm -hmm. However, what I wanted to focus on, and I'll just we'll just go that. There you go. There's this there's Pillar Forty Three in all its glory. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it's actually got a cover over it now, so it doesn't. You know, there's a big shelter over it now. Yeah, they've built a yeah like um, a shed over the top. Yeah, yeah, heaven heaven forbid that you know and it, you know tinfoil hat stuff. However. If, you, if we're to believe Pillar 43, then mm. the stars above Gobekli Tepe are exactly the same because remember it, that four dates, it matches four dates, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and there's something interesting here too. Was it 20,000 years ago? Now, these won't be accurate because I'm pulling it out. Check the podcast. The dates are accurate. Um, <laughs> 20,000, 12,800, 4,000, mm -hmm. right? The interesting thing about 4,000 is that there's a couple of bits of research about Masonic stuff that I've been doing, as you well know. Mm -hmm. 
and they talk about 4000 BC as right. something, right? Yes, yep. Um, and then today, okay? And the question I think we ended that podcast on is, is the most pertinent date that Pillar 43 represents today? Yeah. Because that, that would represent, we're in, you know, if it's 20,000, 12, you know, we're in a cycle, right? And we're, it's an interesting question. Definitely. But where I wanted to go is the pot-bellied hill. Mm-hmm. I wanted to show you some vantages of Gobekli Tepe that you may not have seen before. Right. Be, mainly because the pillars are very interesting. However, logistically for me, the most is the interesting part is how the fuck did they fill it? Yeah, yep. Right? And the reason I wanted to show you this too is you can see all the braces, right? You can see all the braces of the T-shaped pillars. Yeah. That wouldn't have been like that originally. No, no, no. No, we've put them in. Yeah, we've put them in. And you can actually see they've built stones around to keep the stones standing up. Yep. But they, they, um, I'm pretty sure they found most of them standing up. I'm pretty sure. You can see there's obviously broken ones there Mm -hmm. as they're trying to move them or I, I... the thing is, with Klaus Schmidt unfortunately passing away, we we lost the the leader of that yeah. excavation. So well, also back when it was buried, like you said, how did they do it? How what amounts were they putting in at one time? Mm. You know, I'm looking here at the the mix up of the material in the walls. Yeah, there's pretty large stones in those walls. Mm in terms of like maybe up to 200 sort of mil, yeah. you know, eight inches, yeah. sort of eight inch little boulder. So if you're, you know, throwing this stuff in, depending on how they did it and what volumes they put in at once, you may have got zones around that uh, were more compacted and then looser zones in other areas, yeah. which would cause movement over time with That's settling, right. which would then put, geological pressure yeah pressure and strain onto some of those t-shaped pillars which would break them absolutely stones and my question especially with in this picture in particular is that what's at the bottom of the big hill oh where the the one tree hill the one tree hill up the back there right it's like i would be digging straight down there yeah now these are this is um enclosures a b c and d and that's the main stuff that's been excavated Mm -hmm. they estimate anywhere between 25 to 60 other circles are actually underneath the ground still through ground penetrating it was it was five percent or so wasn't it yeah that has been unearthed yeah yeah so yeah there's 95 percent more to go yeah you know like that's a fairly large site for alone that five percent there for for hunter gatherers to construct yeah you know if that's what that's what we want to go if not yeah, obviously yeah. we don't want to go with that but like if that's what we're going to go yeah, if with the, if they're hunter gatherers in war paint and loincloths and they're you know taking one rock at a time yeah that's that's quite a grandiose structure mm. right there mm. and then you add another 95 percent on top of that exactly that's, that is massive that's a complex how did they fill it <laughs> yeah and, and they filled it prior to the second cataclysm the eleven thousand six hundred one correct right. yep but going back actually i just had a thought going back to what we we're talking about before because the evidence in carvings and bits and pieces does really suggest a solar thing what if we got hit by a meteorite first then the solar flare cleaned it up mm. yeah you know what i mean like what this, time period what well what, what, what we get the twelve thousand eight hundred one, and then the eleven thousand six hundred. and they're the two major that's it yes yes right? the start and the finish of the younger drives yeah. yeah so what if one was a you know, external impact. Yep. And the other one was a solar flare. Could there's be, no reason. There's no why reason it why be. it couldn't be. It's like all we got to do is both. find a fucking shred of evidence mm. that points in that in that fucking direction. Mm. So here's another one, right? So this is you. Can, I like this one because you can actually see the fill in the walls a bit better yeah. in yep. that. Yep. Um, and you're right. It's not small stuff. Okay. It, there's a lot of loose dirt, but there's, there's you know, w- what we would call in Australia boulders, basically. Mm, mm. You know, fist shape type stuff. Definitely. And it's not, I, for whatever reason, thought it was a bit looser than this, but it's not, obviously. Mm. Um, you can see where they've built some of it up. Like, I think some of this here looks like it's been built to support the pillar. Right? Yeah. So it's been yep. done 
during the excavation. Yep. I'm more looking at the edges and, and that sort of stuff for, for evidence of what the actual fill was, you know? Yeah. But it's fascinating. But look how deep it is. I mean, if we look at, so look, you've got the down step there and then it goes, it looks like it sort of goes up the hill. I mean, how, mm -hmm. that's, that wall has got to be at least, what, 1.8, 2 metres, you would say, roughly. Um, could be even higher. The perspective's interesting. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Mm. Like you're judging off like off that the pillars. Off, yeah. Well, also off the walkway because we haven't yeah. stood next to a pillar. Yeah. But that walkway, you know, that's constructed yeah, for about, humans to walk on. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, yeah. Look, I'm going to say that that back wall we're looking at, I'm going to reach into three meters. Yeah, of potentially like ten foot. Sort yeah, of potentially. Zone. And but, if you look at the way that the the pillars are positioned, they still originally used the gradient of that hill yes because this it's all sloping down those middle ones that are in the focal in well that, that i think that's one of the questions that doesn't get asked mate is that is that the case or was this once a temple that sat on its own ridge and they completely filled it in like what is the what is the the function how did they actually do that because i mean you you've moved dirt for most of your existence mm. i've spent most of my life in logistics we understand the cubic footage and the machinery that you would need to do this today. Oh, yeah. Right? And like I said... And a percentage of it would still have to be done by hand today. Yeah. To... Well, with the... Like, if they've built all those stack stone little walls, if they were original, if they're not from now, mm. you know, that's hand work. You can't... You've got to bring each... You got to bring loads of that stone. In. I looked. I read. I, I I did try and find out whether they were or not. There was no either way. Like yep. it was like it, it, some of it, it, it. Like if we go to, I mean, there's another one, right? I'm going to say a lot of it is because if you look at the way some it curves around different things, maybe it is original. I think it's original. Could be. And they've just Could um. Be. Clean if you look, if you look down to the bottom and left of the corner, there's the fill there. So yeah. you see that 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 edge there yeah that would be the fill which is what i thought it would have been yeah so if that's the case then it's even looser which means it's even more difficult to transport realistically mm. Mm. you know to fill in and and fill it in yet still keep them aligned yeah like that takes care but it also takes you know that's a lot of hunter gatherers with armfuls of dirt yeah exactly you know with coconuts yeah <laughs> carrying well, they're, they're, well it's not, they're, they're <laughs> whatever they're using <laughs> to carry the dirt I whatever know. implements you yeah. know in the in their shirt in their shirt yeah who I, knows i mean it's it's just such a fascinating question mm. um the next question i've got is what's under those boxes uh because it's like why they why why are those ones yeah, covered why, up why are they boxed up that's yeah. a good that's a good point yeah mm. what's under the boxes yeah you can see in the back along the walkway there's a bit more of an example of the fill yeah look this isn't a we have an answer however it's just more this is a very very interesting question to me mm. because not only do the carvings not only does the hunter gatherers who made gobekli tepe understand geography mathematics astronomy uh construction engineering the list goes on they also had an ability to carefully fill however at the same time they filled it yet it was perfectly preserved so they it was like if they just chucked dirt on it forever right we both know what would happen eventually it'd just fall over and these pillars would have exposed themselves hmm a long time before now. Yeah, exactly. You get subsidence. Yeah. yeah. So not that's, only have they filled it, but they've filled it professionally. In layers, compacted it. Compacted it. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Because, yeah, otherwise you'd get subsidence. And how much, I mean, how many bits of machinery would we need to do it now? Oh, looking at that site and re remembering that that's 5%. Yeah. We would have huge diggers and probably... 15 20 of them yeah of different machines of yeah. different types dump trucks maybe trucks yeah sort yeah. of thing but, but then, probably you know. graders compactors yeah you know you know rollers like yeah. the, the list goes on that's right as to how what the list of machinery we would need what to we use. would use yeah and yeah you know you would have to have in your job description for for this project mm. you would have to have um care to be taken over the top of mm. uh production Mm. Because 
if you start just tipping Phil from the side and pushing it in with a dozer, you can't, you're gonna everything's, knock, you're gonna everything's going, going down. It's, it's all getting yeah. demolished. See, this to me doesn't look original. That to me, well... Looks like it's been built as a supporting wall. That, that to me... There's, there's two ways we could look at it. That was done when they were backfilling mm. to take care and support true, it. True, true. Actually, and, do you know what? The, they did the same thing in the tunnels in the Bosnian Pyramid. They actually shored up the walls yep. before they filled it in. Yep. Boom. So that's a possibility. Yep. Or has it been done recently? Has it been done recently? To, to shore to up. To do the same do thing. The same to shore thing. the pillars. Yeah. Um, However, the, that's if you a piece look, of information we don't have. We don't have. However, if you, when I get the uh, the Jock Double Day video out, yeah, there's a very similar on the sides of that those tunnels, mm. a very similar type formation. Obviously, very different because it's in the jungle. However, the just that loose, yeah, hand just that rock. loose stack. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, that one was mainly for the bracing that they have to do, and to have a think about. Like you can all, you can see the slot that that one sits in. Mm -hmm. Think about for a second, that would have been standing upright. Yeah. So I wonder how deep the slot is. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm thinking that when I look at this stuff, and it's another good example of the fill there you see in the middle. Yes. Um, I'm looking at this stuff and going, it hasn't been fully excavated properly. Right. Yeah. And if you look on the at the back there, there's there's probably more evidence to say that that some of that stacking is uh, original because yes, you, the, can you can see the dirt in the fill there. Yeah. You see the the block in the middle mm. looks like fill mm. material, and then the wall at the back it's between that, those two it's pillars, got that loose stacking in it. It's been stacked. Yeah. But you've, you can tell that they've um, used like brushes mm. to to clear the dirt away from them. Yeah. So that, so it could be column A, column B type stuff. Yeah. Well, hang on. Here's, here's, here's the fucking smoking gun, dude. Smoke the sandbags there? Boom. Yeah. That's, so the stack stone, I'm going to say, is old school. And the Those sandstone, sandbags, they're, man. They're not. They're the new stuff, yeah. obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. So There you go. There you go. That's it, I think. I think. There's another, I mean, just the scale, I think, have you seen this perspective of Gobekli Tepe before? No, I haven't no. seen these photos before, man. No, I, I, I dug for these, man, because yeah. I, it was important to show a different perspective. And because I think we, we spend an inordinate amount of time on Pillar 43, mm -hmm. there's so many more. Yeah. And so many different types of carvings. As I say, I could dedicate 10 slides to each bloody pillar and we, we'd be here all night. Yep. We may be anyway, considering where the, how long the story is. However... <laughs> it's not a problem well man i'm i'm seeing some other cool anomalies getting around bottom right hand corner on that big pillar um in the bottom right hand mm -hmm, corner of the mm -hmm, photo mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is that a drilled hole it looks like a hole doesn't it a core here, drill it looks like a hole yeah. and i'm on the last slide if you go back in the right hand side of the screen there's another block embedded in oh, the hang wall on, there's, there's a hole there with that's, a round hole there's, in it. that's actually that has got a hole in now it. these are fucking you know ancient uncivilized people yeah that that constructed this you know Ma magical chisels the man. dawn of civilization yes the absolute dawn you know they've reset the the history books that's very interesting that block there with the circle in i didn't actually notice that before yeah it looks i was like focused a on the bracing box. does a little <laughs> does a little but yeah so oh that's nice. Yeah. So look, it, there's not too much more to say on the field. This isn't more of a, this is more of a, there's more questions to be asked. Yeah. And the fact that they filled it in and, and they filled it in so carefully actually proves, again, advanced well, knowledge. Advanced knowledge and the admiration for this site. Absolutely. There was, there was an ab absolute admiration for what this provided to them mm. and we technically need to remember as well that it was built and buried in that twelve thousand to eleven thousand six hundred period yeah exactly so whoever did this they has built gone, it okay look we we it's we, coming back whatever's coming is coming back we put all the stuff in yeah. like the information yeah. right that we needed to mm -hmm. but the problem is the stone wasn't as solid as we thought we needed it. Yeah. So we're going to have to build something more solid next time. Or is it next the same? time we might stack 
two point five million fucking stones on top of each other, because <laughs> whatever's coming ain't moving that. That's puppy. right. Nothing's gonna move. It's that. not gonna move that dog. And yeah. we'll put all the information into that. The yeah. alignments. Yes. The sizes. The yes. speeds. Yes. All of those measurements yes. that They're can going be into that. pulled out of that pyramid. Well, and this is when we, because I've got maps at the start of each section. When we start to have a look at going around. It's all in the sort of similar place, man. You know what I mean? There was a cradle of civilization there. There was an advanced civilization in that area. Oh, 100%. It's undeniable, man. right? Yeah. And yeah, it just, it, it blows my mind. Moving past, and I suppose I've got the confidence now to start conducting my own research, I suppose, for, instead of just relying on articles. Mm -hmm. I go searching for what I want to see. Yep. And I'm, and I'm looking for the papers that I want to read to give me that input data mm -hmm. and gobekli tepe is so fucking amazing no one i don't think we grasp it because yep. it's in the bottom right hand corner of syria and that's not exactly a tourist destination right now no and because of as i say unfortunately you know Klaus schmidt may rest in peace however it stopped after that right the accelerated excavation came to a halt after he passed away and if it's only 5%, imagine what it has got to teach us, right? But it, it, it takes us looking past our hubris and devoting, you know, archaeo archaeologists and anthropologists and archaeoastronomers and just descending on that site until it was done. Mm. Uh, and funding. And funding. For all of that. Yeah. Mm. You know. <coughs> Unfortunately, it's going to be an uphill battle. It will be. However, I hope that it continues. I wanted to give it a, an overhead view of the site because that gives us a different perspective as well, right? So obviously the, the bracing that we see is in the top there, okay? Yep. yep. Um, gives you a bit more... Ah, there's some alignments. Yeah. Yes. A, B, C, and D, okay? Uh, I'll just go forward a bit because you can, this is where the pillars are. Okay. All right, so you can see there, pillar 43... Hold sighting stone. There you go. That's the one. That's the one, right? So there is a hold stone there, okay? So that hold stone is actually next to pillar 43. So pillar 43 is the, is the, the that top, basically the top yeah. one straight there where the brace is, the left of the brace is, that's where it is there. That's pillar 43. Yep. Um, and that's right next to the hold sighting stone. Yep. Yeah, the Vulture Stone, 43. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see what you're talking mm -hmm. about. But yeah, look, that that's the only... That's all we've excavated so far. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny when you think about it in terms of um, how, there's, how there's different circular uh, zones. Mm -hmm. You could think about it like... So, Pillar 43, there's evidence that it could tell story of of the cataclysm yeah right so what if each one tells a different thing each site a b c d mm. tells a different story of a different time different era that different epoch a, that the buildings the builder civilization thought was important to yeah. remember yeah that's an interesting question that's an interesting question the, with all this stuff again getting some of this because i was basically looking for images to show the fill that was the question right is that because of obviously logistically yep but through that through that looking mm -hmm. i had to pull back because it's like oh hang on a minute I'm, I'm i'm spiraling down that hole where i'll never you know well and it's and it's very easy to spiral from afar mm. you know because it's like without having the ability to be there and mm. you can get lost but there's many many more secrets that go beckley tepe has for us hundreds dude mm. Mm -hmm. When this is all we've got excavated and mm -hmm. there's so much more. Yeah. So from here, we go, I just wanted to touch on the hands. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is some of, I, and I, I should have got which pillar this is. I didn't. Yep. So there you go. There's our first error report. I need to put what pillar this is. Yep. That one there, it's the H symbols there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the hands. Okay. Obviously, we see the hands at Easter Island. Yep. We see them in South America. We see them here in Australia. I think we see them uh, in around Egypt and that as well. Okay. Yep. 
those forward facing hands and that's actually um as far as i understand it a representative of that's a mother holding her yeah her pregnant tum- belly her tummy yeah, yeah. yeah which is exactly what they do today you know we yep. you know both of them it's, it's a very classic yeah yeah thing to, right? for them to do and that h symbol yep the massive h is at puma punku okay mm-hmm. it's just some of the symbology that echoes around the planet mm-hmm you know, just a couple of just a couple of different visions of that, and just to remember that, again, what what how many countries are on that list at the start? I don't remember. You know, I couldn't even begin to rattle them off again. Twenty billion, right? Yeah. So, but then we come to that's an indigenous fella. Yep. Okay. Australian. The right. Wizard of Wagaya, a great medicine man of Central Australia, as the signs on his body show, he instructs tribes in mysteries. Now. I read one article. So basically, they said because of that, that the the two hoops underneath and the thing in the middle. Yep. That it was very similar to Australian Indigenous. Yes. Okay. Because yep. he just doesn't have the ends on his H. He doesn't have the ends on his H, yep. right? However, the entire article debunked it because there's a H there can't be Australian Indigenous. Yep. Well, of course. Of that's course. a that's a variation of a symbol. Okay. And I would actually argue that if you look at that pillar. The, that that the edges that he's that there is actually the whole pillar i know exactly what you're saying right yeah yeah it doesn't mean that that's actually necessarily a h no it could be the edges of that it's pillar. the edges of the whole pillar and that's it? actually separate that's yeah. what it looks like to me yeah um however like we just said we said in the beginning very authoritatively mm. this thing no it's definitely not this because of this right yeah. to me that looks like that and that yep. is the edges of the pillar yeah no i'm not saying it is australian indigenous However, what I am saying is that the evidence is building of Australian Indigenous symbology echoing around the globe. Yeah. yeah. And that's part of the larger work that we're all, doing here. All the global stuff echoing here. Exactly. It doesn't necessarily... It, it could, could come, be, it it could could be come from around. here. It Absolutely. could come from there to here. Absolutely. It could just actually be global. I think know? it is. I think, I think at the end of the day, it's global. Yeah. Right? I think, you know, basic spirituality, symbology, it is global. Yeah. Thinking back too, though, looking at the back there, that's also more evidence that that look that wall looks original. If you compare the stone to the wall, mm-hmm. they're about the same age, aren't they? So that's definitely that hasn't been put there. That was there, yeah, when it was buried. They look, yeah, they look very similar. Mm. But yeah, that, that I just wanted to finish on that, and just yeah. the fact that one article goes, no, nah, that's it, no, it's not. But to me, it looks like the edges of the pillar. If that's the case, then that takes that back into perspective. Hundred percent, and even even. If they were, if if it was to exactly be an H in the other one mm. and this one, it's a variation of the it's, it's a variation of very like the percentage of that symbol that is the same is far outweighs the part that is different. Exactly. And exactly. what's to say it's not a regional thing? You know, well, this in is the, this region of the globe, that's the symbol. And in that, the next they region, they add the, the sides, put the little sides on it because because that's what they do. Because that's what they do. What's right. to say and, it's not the and, case? And this is why I say it echoes because I think there's just different variations mm-hmm. of the same thing over and over again. Yeah, yeah. That's about it for Gobekli Tepe, mate. Well, look, that's it's you know that's it's just a little shed, snapshot, and it's shed some more information on Gobekli Tepe than what I've been presented with before. Yeah, and that that's the aim. That's the aim because mm-hmm. you could spend a three day conference on Gobekli Tepe if you wanted to. Right, so part of this these megalithomania presentations that I'm putting together is it's more about asking questions and just showing a different range of information. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and I probably should understand what pillar that is too. Should have a pillar name, shouldn't I? Pillar numbers at least. That's all right. You'll it's get okay. There. We're learning. So from here, we go to Balbek. Yep. But what I want you to notice is where Syria is. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that means Gobekli Tepe is just up to the, you know, just up to the top right there. Top right. Yep. yep. Right, so it's not that far away. But what's in what's it what's it that's outside Lebanon, mate? Baalbek. Hmm. The ancient city of Baalbek is one of the greatest archaeological mysteries of all time. Located east of the Latani River in Lebanon, Baalbek is known for its monumentally scaled Roman temple ruins. These Roman temples were built on top of an even more ancient five million square foot platform. That was made from some of the largest stones ever used in any construction project ever used. The largest stone found weighs 1,200 tons, actually 1,600, and is about 64 feet long. I'll give a plug to Mysteries 
unresolved or runsolved because they've got some pretty cool stuff. Yep. They hate they I do use that stuff. It's mysteries runsolved dot com. Uh but I thought five million square feet forty six point five hectares. Yep. A hundred and fifteen acres or four hundred and sixty four thousand five hundred and fifteen square meters. Like that's a large site. Just wrap your laughing gear around those numbers just for a little second there. Yeah. Okay. Now I wanted to give you a different perspective of Balbeck too, because that's a different perspective. We don't often see what's left of the temple from that angle. Yeah. Right. It's always because when we're looking it up, we're looking up the megalithic stones, aren't we? Right. Exactly. There's a bit of an overview of the site, and it's not a total overview. You can see it actually extends up the top yeah. there a bit further. So is that the temple down the bottom? The temple's down the bottom there, and then you've got well, there's, it's all a temple, right? Yeah. And Bacchus, so it's the temple of Bacchus or uh, Dionysus. Mm -hmm. All right. He's the uh, is the god of wine of course we love wine yeah wine and um wine oh, i can't remember I was, I was trying to remember this wine and revelment or something like that festivities yeah something like that but <laughs> if you're going to build a temple to any god there's probably the one to build it to you know what i'm saying like Raider. but that the is god of good times the god of good times <laughs> this one was cool because this is actually a f one of the earliest photos of the entrance of the temple to Baalbek, taken around 1900 and just look at the entrance way, man. Mm, that's awesome. You know, like... Makes you think of giants. It does make you think of giants. Because all the big... The, all the doors are big. Like, through Egypt, they're all big. However, more about... Uh, just having a look at the, the masonry as well. The mm. size of the stones. Okay? Yeah. That's something we're going to look at in a minute. But I just thought that was a really, really cool perspective that I, I hadn't seen before. Um, and I only had like a thumbnail picture of it. I had to go and dig to find a higher quality resolution so we could see it in this format. There's another one we don't see. But I wanted to show here just the the Roman artistry. And look at the lion's face. Yep. Does it look symmetrical to you? Looks very symmetrical. You sure? Oh, no, to the left it's not. It, yeah, it looks definitely like not. the yeah. nose and skews one way. It does, actually. No, you're right. Which, you're if, right. if that's Roman, yeah. the Egyptian, Egyptian stuff is, ten times is better. way better than yeah, that. Yeah. Well, we're going to go to Egypt. You wait till we get there. Uh, but it just wanted to see that because the Romans, in their own right, yeah. were very talented. Oh, 100%. Like, we, we can't actually, you know, when we say, oh, the Romans didn't, put the big blocks there i don't think they did at all did they build an amazing temple stone temple on top of it yes they did there's yeah. the evidence right there right yeah. no doubt about that you know the romans do need their due okay mm. you know there's roads in europe that are still functioning better than what any road that we built here yeah that the romans built three thousand years ago yeah no look they were very good at what they did mm. um but were they as good as the ones that came before? Not at all. No. And they just didn't do it on the scale yeah. that those who came before. Now, see, where we got here, this is a different perspective. And um, this is going to play trickery with you, okay? Mm. Because those blocks underneath... So you've got the two walls there. You've got the big yeah. blocks underneath, yep. and then you've got the, the small the, the, blocks, the, small blocks, the Roman stuff on top. Yep. When I first looked, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're not that big. And then I saw that. Then you put a dude in there. Yep. Right? That is not the big, massive nine stones, you know, the big the big massive ones that, are, that make the platform. That is an entirely different set of stones. Judging by those two blokes there that are three meters by what 10 meters yeah easy yeah right not small stones at all no at all and there's numerous there's there's like you know if we go back to this one how many's there there's six seven you know around the corner like they're not you, you're talking hundreds of probably you know a couple of hundred ton in each of those yeah yeah you would think yeah. right but they don't look that big until you do that until you put them in perspective yeah which makes you appreciate 
the newer Roman stuff as well. Absolutely. Like, like you were saying before, you know, you look at the Roman stuff up the back there mm. and it's like, you know, they were no slouches themselves. No, it's not bad work at all. 100%. Like, you know, they, they were trying to emulate... Well, that's I it. think they knew as well that stone was what it was. The stone lasts the longest. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But they were coming from a perspective where they had a lot of time and mm. a lot of resources to perfect an art, mm. but they were never able to logistically get to the point where they could do it with the bigger stones. Mm. They could do it with that because they could use human thuggery. Yeah. to move that around. And look, and to pretend they didn't have basic pulleys and wheels and stuff because of the chariots, all that yeah, sort of exactly. stuff. Yeah, exactly. They had basic lifting technology, yeah. uh, which allowed them to, to lift the, the larger ones of these stones, you know, cranes and, and, and the such. Yeah. Um, however, I still struggle to see them lifting those big ones there. Yeah, or dragging, dragging. those big ones, yeah. or pushing, or whatever. Yeah. Whatever it is. And I just... Moving. So, yeah, we always focus on the on the big massive ones but I just wanted to look at the temple itself you just come back to the medium sized ones and them alone exactly will blow your yeah mind. why Yeah, why do we need to worry about the, the stone of the pregnant woman when yeah. we, we got a half a dozen stones there that are ginormous yeah like, exactly you know but there we go here is what I wanted to see here mm -hmm. is I'm looking past the big ones on the top yep and what I'm looking at is the work that it would take to shape that angle. Mm -hmm. And then how interlocked are these ones underneath? So if you think about that, that bottom three rows, yeah, it looks to me, it's an interesting, and it's hard to know without being on the side, but the very bottom row looks to be bigger stones. And then there's two smaller stones. Yep. And then you've got the massive one. Then you've got massive, then you've got big ones, and then you've got the massive ones on top. Mm -hmm. Made me wonder... How long are the stones in those two rows that we can see? The ones that look small. Mm. Yeah. Are they long, rectangular, like yeah. pillars yeah. laid on their side? Yeah. Which yeah. you would think of from an engineering perspective, if you're going to put massively heavier stones on top, they would almost have to be. You couldn't have the, small the inconsistency into... of, exactly. the, of the sections would not give you the strength that you needed. Mm. So if that's the case, they're laying pillars who knows how long yeah like or they could be and just the engineering well, the rocks the rocks above tell me that there's no reason they can't exactly you know yeah exactly yeah if you, <laughs> you yeah. look at the massive the you know the the sort of medium size small medium to large and just fucking massive stones that are above it they're making long pillars as far because if, again if you're putting x amount of tons on top of each other mm. you need that yeah yeah that's right well the the only other thing i'm thinking of in terms of like if you're thinking of putting matchsticks on their side and then placing those big big blocks on top would you risk snapping them if there was well the thing is though we're talking about inconsistencies yeah <laughs> They're pretty precise. Mm. You know, there's not you a lot of inconsistency. You can't put a piece of paper in between these stones. Yeah, exactly. So it's like there's not a lot of inconsistency. So you wouldn't need to worry about snapping those long uh, those long pillar-type blocks mm. that are laid on their side, if that's what they are. Mm. that would That's an interesting point that you raise. Like, are they small? But And what I gather from looking just at that mm. is that if you're correct in saying it's large stones on the bottom, then there's two rows of smaller stones and then larger stones put on top. That's like a shoring layer, mm. a settling layer. Yeah, that's right. Sort of thing, like a cushioning. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get it at. It could also be like a like earthquake mitigation as that's, well. Yes, that, mm. and that's what I'm thinking mm. it could possibly be there for. Mm. Yeah, which if you're engineering things to that degree, mm -hmm. you're, possi you're, you're probably mitigating for earthquakes. Mm. Mm. And and to me the the, the thing that I, I didn't really pay much attention to till now is that step out, yeah, right. That in itself is impressive as well because yeah. it looks like it's consistent across the entire stone. If you look at that yeah. one there, that it's the same angle yep. across the entire stone. Yep. So that was done at the same no, at the same time, or it was done to an exact 
every stone was made at the same time, basically. Yeah. To the same angle. That's right. And not only that, but to the same measurement. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just interesting stuff. It, these, it's these smaller details now that we, we don't get overawed by the big details. Mm. Coming back and looking at the smaller details. Is that a dude? Go back. That one. Yeah, that, there's a, that's, a, that's a dude, yeah. So that puts it in perspective. That puts it you. in perspective, yeah. So there's a dude in the bottom left-hand corner. So, yeah, we're still talking the smaller stones there are, are, are two metres. 1.8, 1. 1. 1.5, yeah. 1.5 to 2. Yeah. You know, if he's yeah. somewhere like 5, five, five to, to 6 foot somewhere, yeah. he's, he's still the height of one of those runs. Yeah. So they're not small they're stones. They're not small stones. They just look small against the 1,000 ton stones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's such a fascinating thing. And that, that this is this one, it goes around the corner, man. Yep. Even that but that corner piece in the bottom, the guy's leaning up against it, mm -hmm. that's a corner piece that slots in the corner on both on top and bottom. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Right, so the level of masonry that that takes. Yeah. It's massive. All right, so so that then gives you an idea of how big that stone is, that corner piece. Yep. Because you've got you've got three edges there. Mm hmm So you can then make a fourth edge. Yep. Um, however, still, man, they're massive. That perspective blows my mind, dude. Yeah. Sorry. That's Whoa. okay. It's okay. But this is the one. Here we go. Near the 2,000-year-old Temple of Jupiter in Baalbek, Lebanon, sits the largest known megalithic block, discovered in 2014. That was an interesting thing that I didn't, I knew but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. 64 foot by 19.6 foot by 18 foot. This stone weighs 1,650 tons. And that's a pregnant woman. That's the stone. It? Pregnant. Yeah. Yep. And does it have a floor in it? Does it have a crack or something? No, not that one. They just not didn't that move that one. They just this, didn't this move. This is this is another one of those ones where it's like they they were halfway through because we're going to have a look at a couple more. They were halfway through cutting blocks and they just left. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now that there could be one of those matchstick blocks that you're talking about. Could be. You know, it's what nineteen point six feet by eighteen feet. Mm, so twenty foot, so, so that's four feet. So that's six meters by nineteen meters by five meters, six meters. Yeah, five and a bit meters. So yeah, six meters by five and a bit by eighteen. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm. Yeah, so that square bit on the end, it's larger than those ones we were looking at before, mm. Mm. but in a similar fashion, that could possibly be what that. That oh, was. they could have been uh, lining that up to cut it up, maybe something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's interesting, man. It's interesting. There's another. There's a different version of it. Yep. Um, but this is what I wanted to look at there because there's actually three stones. Yeah. That's, that, that's that one there. But then they dug around it, and there's three stones. That one's been cut as well. Mm -hmm. And I suppose you know it's a question we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. However, how the fuck did they cut it? Yeah. You know, the, how have they prepared at least two stones there? Yep. And it kind of looks like they started to move that one because it's on a bit of the angle, the angle that dangles a bit off, right? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Compared to the cut mm. or the trench that's in the ground there. Yeah. That looks a fairly straight cut or trench or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. The other stone, it's, the other it's stone skew if, right? Is, is on a, yeah, it's on an angle, definitely. Mm. So they... I don't know, they either cut it in place or they started to move it, which is interesting. Yeah. You know, I am seeing a lot of stuff, uh, and I'm not too sure. Some of it's very interesting that that's all cast concrete type stuff. Yeah, yep. Been seeing yep. a lot of that recently. Uh, I don't discount all of it. Um, Look, the thing that makes me interested in that kind of thing is the way in which, sorry, the way in which um, concrete's made up, right? Yeah. If you think about our our common use of concrete these days, we use an aggregate with a cement powder mm. that um, is made up of 
ash and lime ash and, and lime stuff like and that. Basically. Okay. So, we, yeah. So if you think about um, like granite or feldspar or something like that, mm. it's also got a structure. Yes. It's not one uh, rock. It's it's yeah. a it's a complex. It's made up of crystalline yeah. uh, sections and stuff like that. It's just purely the makeup of of granite that allows me to think because well because it's a a volcanic rock mm. you know it's just cured cured magma yeah granite's very interesting granite so, as as we're going to talk about and as muhammad sort of uh alluded to mm. granite can carry energy it's a conductor yeah because it's full of well it's full of crystals it's full of crystals full of quartz yeah yeah you know and, and i don't think I didn't check the the type of stone that is at Balbeck, so that, that's there's another little dot point that I can um, make sure I put into the into the mix next time. Yeah. So that's that's about it for Balbeck, mate. We, I just wanted to have a. It was more the Balbeck stuff was less about the big stones and more about just getting a different perspective on the wall itself and on the temple itself, mm -hmm. because again, when you when you hyper focus. You know, what have we talked about so many times in here? You've got to be in an observant state. So that's what I've tried to do. I've tried to back off the crazy stuff. Well, or, sometimes know, it's hard to see the forest for the trees. The forest for the trees, exactly. Yeah. You, you know. know, you need to back back a little bit and have a look around. Mm. I agree. I see what you're doing. Because through that, I think, if you're trying to build the jigsaw puzzle, you need to look at all the pieces. Yeah. Yeah. You know, instead of hyper focusing on different different areas i'm hearing you mm. so yeah that's that's it mate so from there we go back to another old friend egypt hello friend one thing that uh muhammad helped me understand yep is the distance between luxor and cairo is actually quite a distance Okay, Luxor was down the bottom, Cairo's yes, at the top. I see. Yep, 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 yep. I didn't understand that that's how far away that was. Right? It's actually quite a ways down the Nile. Yep. Okay. Obviously, you know, Thebes, Luxor, Giza, Cairo, Saqqara. There's two main areas. But what Muhammad was saying is that, you know, if he, if something happens in Luxor, it may be, you know, a day, half a day, a day, two days before he actually finds out what's going on. Because he's in Cairo. He's in he? Cairo, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Muhammad sits in his, where he sits, he looks left or right, I think it's left, and basically sees the Great Pyramids. Across the pyramids. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And he sent us Great Pyramid energy. So, yeah. And much love to him for that. And what a cool guy. You oh, know, very cool guy. You know, he's actually he's about to start a tour. However, when that tour was done, we got a couple of uh, we got a couple of dates booked. And looking at the Egypt stuff, it a lot of it has been it's some of the old stuff that we I wanted to just touch on that we haven't talked about in a little while. However, there's also some questions that obviously our association with Muhammad has, has raised, and we have a an expert on the ground with you know twenty plus years experience to be able to actually communicate that to us. So I thought, you know, I love that perspective. Yep. Because the second one that looks tall is not the, it's not, that's not the Great Pyramid. No. From that perspective, the second pyramid looks huge. Yeah. It's actually the one in the background. It's the one in the background, yeah. That's a cool perspective that I hadn't quite seen before. Yeah. Now, one of the things I do definitely want to talk to Muhammad about is what's in the other two pyramids? Yeah. We don't hear about that. No. What's in the other two pyramids? What What is in that? In, you can see the entrances there. Yep. What's in the other two? That's one of the questions I want to ask him. With the casing stones... That was an interesting one as well that I wanted to touch on. Uh, it 
so the casing stones that they've found, just so we under, so everybody understands, and Muhammad goes into great detail into in uh, I think it's Egypt too. However, not only were they interlocking, but they were built on an angle, so each one locks into each other. But some of these cornerstones they've found yeah. are four meters. So it's not like, you know, when we spoke about it originally, we thought, oh, they just would have been stones to match the thing and make give it a nice shiny surface. Yeah. No. The, the, and the other thing is, too, is some of them were half limestone, half granite. They weren't all the same material. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and right. And different types of granite as well. Yep. And the fact that uh, Muhammad said, no, there's actually a lot of churches and mosques and bits and pieces in Cairo that have been that the casing stones were used to build so yep. you know how we assume there wasn't much there yes he goes no 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 that's not true there's a lot here yep that you can point to this is where the right okay yeah 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 because yeah. yep. the stones are same between the different buildings oh. and that's what yeah i get you yeah so but because i said oh it was, the, the story's an earthquake he's like yeah that is the story however if you think about each stone you, you're building the pyramid right and as you go up each stone actually goes down on an angle and interlocks into the next one. So that means the higher you go, the more downward pressure is created, the stronger it gets. An earthquake's not going to fucking shake that loose. That's what he was basically saying. He's like, yeah. I'm not sure. He goes, "Some it is more than an earthquake that yep. shook those casing stones loose because the amount of what would have to happen in order to shake one of them, because the one on the bottom, so that the, the story is one down low, mm got shook out yeah and that was like the the you know the, the keystone everything else got pulled out yeah but he's saying the downward pressure on the ones on the bottom row from all the ones from all the on ones top. on stacked on yes. top yeah and he goes then you look at the second pyramid it's like well why is only the top left right yeah. that's a hell of a shake yep yep you know like it, it's again these stories that we just accept as gospel mm -hmm. uh they don't make a lot of sense when you talk to someone on the ground yeah who's looked at it all the time from that perspective yeah exactly i'm i'm thinking i'm thinking using that information i'm thinking um multiple faults fractures in the stone itself so instead of sh instead of shaking a whole stone loose it's um, like a multiple just like a, a heap cracked and a couple yeah fell off the fault something. lines and that that creates then a weakness where it's where you can come in and work and chip away at it sort of thing yeah just gives you a line to work on um and it may have been halfway up who what's to say that fault line was at the bottom it, you know but it's also what what uh i think basically what he was saying is what kind of event yeah to shake that kind of interlock stone loose definitely what happened yeah Hundred percent, and then and then basically he, he didn't say it, but loosely said like, we only know of a couple of different major cataclysms that might have caused that. Yeah, you know, was it water? There's that as well. You know, there's these that the that it was all full of water at some point. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So no, like like you say, as, and as, as we all know, that that pyramidal structure is quite possibly the it, it is the strongest um shape geometric shape absolutely yeah to withstand yeah all of these destructive forces yeah so yeah like you say everything is engineered for it to last stand the test of time mm. and something big enough happened that it was able to crack the the outside veneer mm. yeah mm. so yeah interesting Some, something defeated the external layer yeah yeah and so I, I approached Muhammad about one of our UTC theories. Yes. How we said that the you know, with the casing stones in place, that the eight-sided nature of the Great Pyramid would then be more pronounced and it would send energy, it would reflect energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could it be, could it be like concave? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And focus. And, the, and, yep. he, and just between you and me, because we came up with that theory in this room a couple of years ago now, he agreed with us. So that was pretty cool. Yep. He's there like, that, that's actually a very good perspective. He was impressed that we had that perspective. Have I said to him, then the then where is the 
where's the top? Where's the top of the pyramid? Yeah. Yeah. Right? What was what was Muhammad's answer to that? He doesn't think there was one. Ah. Because in multiple temples, right, so say there's a pyramid shape behind uh, a god or something, mm -hmm. it never goes to the point. It always clips off the top. Oh, really? Right? Yeah. And the, you know, the, the top of the pyramid, what's that bloody called? It slipped my mind. The, the Pyramidian. The Pyramidian, the, um, the top stone. Yeah. It, that is, there's only one story that said there was a top stone. Yeah. Yeah. What if it was interchangeable? You know what I mean? Well, he seems to think that in order to, like, if you think about a receiver and a sender, a point is too focal, right? Yep. So the top of each pyramid, it's flat on the top mm -hmm. because it's a sender and a receiver. So it actually gives it a, 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 a platform to send and receive energy. That was his description. That was his idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about it. You know, like you said, it's, it's all standing on pillars of sand in terms of theories mm -hmm. so all it takes is some evidence to lean things in one way in one direction or the next mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah it's all about look i'm all about it mm. it's interesting it's interesting you know and look you know this is a guy that's looked at this stuff every day so i'll take yeah, he, i'll, yeah, I'll yeah, take yeah. him i'll take him him over us any day 100 percent I just thought it's just because of the scale. Just wanted to have a look at the scale, just quickly. It's an impressive shot. It's so impressive, so impressive. This is one of the first maps that was made of the inside the Great Pyramid. Mm -hmm. However, this one that that's one we've all seen, but this is something we haven't heard about in a little while. The voids. The voids. Yeah. Right. That was a few years ago now that the voids were discovered. Has anything more come out about the voids? No. No. Not yet. They're not letting any more stuff be done. No, they're not letting us uh, letting us know. Or I think you know, it's it's Mr. Hawass again, um, restricting some of the knowledge. Yeah. Um, yeah, because he went into the Sphinx chambers without a camera. Did you know that? No, I didn't. He was first in there without a camera. Yep. So he saw what was in there before a camera saw what was in there. Yep. So if there was anything in there, it's now not there like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but yeah. just, it's just, just wanted to bring the voids back up again. Just wanted to put them back into the lexicon. Yeah. You know, get, get the listeners to search the searches for the voids. Well, not, not only the voids, but the, the stacked stones on top of the king's chamber uh -huh. which give off energy i think they're something along the lines of 70 tons each yep well they're, 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 well that the and grand they're, gallery that they're, they're all lintels that there's like five or six of them yeah yeah and there's ma then they're all massive stacked stones on top of each other on top of the the king's chamber as well yeah. those lintels yeah so yeah i just wanted to bring just wanted to bring that back into the lexicon because we haven't heard any more about it. There's mm. nothing more to be said about it. However, don't forget that there was massive, a small void and a massive void found. And let's just think for a second. Do we, do we honestly believe those voids are there by mistake? Nothing is there by mistake. Nothing in that whole thing is there by mistake. So it's like, yeah, they are... They are there for a reason. We need to know what they are. Mm. One question I have for Muhammad, yep. and it's a question we posed way back in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Why haven't we removed all the stones around the big door? Yeah. Like, in fact, remember we found back in the day, there was evidence of them stacking stone, restacking stuff in front of it. Yeah, because wasn't there a, like, image of it being more exposed yes and then now it's not yeah because if there was a big giant door into the pyramid i'd say that's where it is mm. isn't so, that where you want to go in from yeah yeah why haven't we taken all the stones away from there here's a question 
when the pyramid was originally constructed, yeah, was that door once a, an open doorway, yeah, an entrance, absolutely. And, well, I would say so, yeah. And then, just like a Beckley Tepe, yeah, you, you, we were on the, we're in, we're it's in the, been covered up yes. to preserve. That's exactly where like, I was going to go. We're going, we're going away from. We're this going away for now. a while. We need We've to, got to protect this. Yeah, so we're going to stack it up so stack no one can Stack it up, in. seal it up. Seal it up with these slotted stones that are all stacked on top of each other. Yeah. You know, that only you know how to pull them apart. Yeah, and that's the exact question that I had. And yeah. so that, that I don't have an answer to that, but that is one of the questions I'm going to pose to Muhammad as to why we haven't removed all the stones around the big giant door. Yeah. And, you know, what's the story behind that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there it is. The king's sarcophagus. Apparently. Apparently. And now, the reason that one's up there mm -hmm. is because completely separate, obviously one of the other UTC theories that I came up with was that the Ark of the Covenant fits inside the king's chamber. There's a guy that I'm following on Facebook. He had something about it on his page. He's written like five or six books. On, he's one of the guys that I'm in negotiations with. Okay. Um, so he might come on the podcast. He's down the Gold Coast. So yeah. hopefully he can come on and give his version. But he nice. had he had the he had the Holy Grail. Yep. Oh, sorry. The um, the Ark uh, of Carvin yeah. and the King's Chamber basically crisscrossed over each other in one of his graphics. And I'm mm -hmm. like, hmm, we need to talk. Yes. Let's talk more about that theory. Mm. And just that picture alone. And I, want, I, I don't know, this one on the left there, does that stone curve under? Or is that is it a, is it a trickery of the light? Where are you talking about? Left-hand side there. Left-hand side, I'm looking. Basically the first one that you see on the wall that meets the ground underneath the light. It uh, looks to me like, like it this... is one piece, but it, it might not be. I, yeah. I, I, it's, it's hard, hard to, to tell. It's hard to tell it. Yeah, that line, that seam where the wall meets the floor yeah. is quite, it's a bit fuzzy, you know, and it, the only, the reason I think it, it, it um, could be trickier the it, light. It looks dust. like it does fold in is because the seams on the floor are so, mm. so defined mm. and the seams on the wall. And yet then the seam between the wall and the floor isn't as defined. No. Yeah. It could be trickery, but I just wanted you to cast your eye to the roof of the king's chamber yeah and look at those giant well that's, stones. that's those 70 ton suckers yeah that are stacked and then there's layers on top of that yeah. roof yeah of more of the same mm -hmm. stacked up there yeah and no. just you know and needs to be understood that that's all rose granite yeah which is one of the hardest granites there is out of aswan yeah yeah so muhammad because he's the man you you actually made his floor in his home is rose granite from us one of course it is and what he was telling me he's like fucking baller yeah he's, <laughs> a, he's such a cool guy however he was telling me that here comes the rain he was telling me that to put like see how big those stones are on the floor there he couldn't have those that size stone yep in, I think it was about five or six years ago, you were saying. Yeah. They couldn't... They couldn't cut them that large because it would... Break. Break, yeah. 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 So, there's just unequivocal evidence that we can't actually replicate that today because he tried. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. Well, I, I dare say what the Egyptians or the original builders... The builder have, culture, ...have yeah. done is there's a, there's a ratio... Mm. So if you want to go that large in in a floor you tile, need to be that thick. you got to go that thick. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how thick they are, I'm sure we know, but I don't know. What, no, I don't know right off the top. Of my and head and in our modern world, we're trying to cut those tiles fairly thin. Yeah, yeah. We're cutting them like twenty mil. Yeah, sort of thing. So yeah, to be able to cut it that thin and have it that large, mm, mm. we can't do it. And we've got to do it that way. Because we can't transport it. No. No. We can't carry them into And that, that's what he said. He's basically, well, they couldn't actually get it. I think he's on the second floor or third floor of his yeah. building. He's like, A, they couldn't 
cut it and transport it because it wouldn't last on the back of a truck. Mm. And then the second problem was how do I actually get it into yeah. the house? And how's the house built? Yeah. Can it support? Can it support even, massive? If you're starting yeah. to go thicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How can much it, weight can you put on the, on the floor, right? <laughs> exactly. But I just thought we'd bring the King's Chamber back into, into play because of the Ark of the Covenant. And I am going to get in touch with that guy and continue negotiations so he can come and give his side as well. Delve away, my friend. Delve, delve. But this is where I wanted to take you because this is what has been blowing my mind. And I, I, I had heard of the unfinished obelisk. I knew it was huge, all these things. However, I didn't quite understand that it is pretty much unequivocal evidence of advanced technology. So it's 42 meters long or 138 feet mm -hmm. and comes in at 1168 tons. Yeah. So how are you moving that? How are you moving? How that? are you guys moving that, you bastards? And me and uh, it was actually, you know, said Muhammad's such a cool guy, so appreciative that he takes the time to come on here and, and talk to us. Yeah. However, it <laughs> there's only one picture, one hieroglyph of yep. obelisks in a boat. Yep. And supposedly it's two of them. And they're either 300 ton or 700 ton. Yep. And there's two of them in yep. a boat. Right? And basically, he goes, oh, they in the thing, they said, oh, they just got some wood and they just... just, just They just rolled them just, in. Yeah, yeah, just basically... With some sticks and stuff. Yeah, and sticks and stuff and jimmy them along and, and then just put them on a boat and floated them down the river. 1,400 course, tons. That's how you do it. Yeah. yeah. It's easy. When, easy. <laughs> it's easy when you just think of it like that. Exactly. Right? And... I don't want to get into logistics because there's some really cool stuff to look at because it's unequivocal to me, unequivocal evidence of advanced technology being used because this one's not finished, right? Yeah. So there's a better picture. Can you spot anything there that you might want to think about? Uh, what? So, what are we talking about? The crack down through the middle of it? Well, this is that they one of the reasons they say they didn't lift it is because it was imperfect, and right. that's because they had a crack. Yep. Right, and that 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 straight line is evidence them trying to fix it or something. Okay. But I want you to have a, what is. Look at those marks there. Those scoop marks. Mm. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. Yeah, they're very scoopy. No chisel is going to make that mark. No. No, that's a that's quite a large chisel. Mm. If that's making that mark, mm -hmm. um, the other the other thing I was thinking about is the way in which they've just cut trenches down into the bedrock. So the bedrock's still up, yes, around this pillar. Well, that that was the other thing Muhammad was saying. So how did they get it out? That's that's what I was alluding to. The fact that okay, you cut it, you cut down, and you never find that fracture. And it, it's a perfect piece of granite with no hairline cracks in it or anything like that. Mm. Are you are you now going to just lift that vertically up out of that hole, or are you going to once you've cut it now take the time to remove all of this bedrock next to it so you can lift it so as you can roll it mm. out? Mm -hmm. Like because to me, you're how, do you, how do you how do you roll? 1200 tons of stone hey 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 that's that's a detail for someone else man i'm <laughs> one step at a time bro you know like are you are you winching that to stand it on its end that's an interesting question like stand it up what what's tell me builders what's the next step so the question then is how do they cut underneath it and muhammad tried to explain it into detail Yes. And it made me very, very, very curious. Yes. So I went looking. So there's just a couple more pictures of those scoop marks. Mm -hmm. There's the scoop marks very, at the point. Very imperfect tip on that obelisk. It feels like, and I'm trying to, it's like a, um, you know, people have said like ice cream scoop. Yeah. You know, like it's... it's yeah, definitely. It's interesting. It, looks, like, it, what, it almost looks like, imagine if that rock was sand. Mm-hmm. Those scoop marks, you could imagine them being, you know, if that rock was softer. Softer, exactly. Yeah. All right, exactly. Yep. 
Now, I'm pretty sure they say this is the dolmens. I think this is the balls. So they, they bang the balls and it, it eventually does something, yep. magical, whatever. But yep. obviously, I'm not magical, going into it. Magical balls. But there's a, there's a look at that. Yep. It's And it you can almost see that they're doing test test pieces or, you know, like that's, they got down to the point, you know, look at the edge there. It's like they're carving it. You know what mm. I mean? It's like it's, it's almost, it, what it sort of looks like to me, I've seen it, you know, a, a good dozer operator will get the bucket and he'll go down the wall. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. the excavator only, operator. Excavator, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you're like cutting, uh, like a battering, battering and benching. Yeah. Like on a. That's what it looks like, but yeah. they're doing it in. Yeah. Well, it, it, you know, it makes me think of the, um, the sonic drilling that, um, that I saw the other, saw a podcast on the other day. Yeah. You know, it makes you think of that in a larger scale mm -hmm. sort of thing. Well, that was the, that was the... like, if you look at all the all of the scoop marks they're, they're a very consistent size mm -hmm. so if you had a, had a it's a tool had a thing mm. that you place mm -hmm. and then you m pick it up and you move it and you mm -hmm. pick it up and move it mm -hmm. and it's just very rhythmic but the the trivia photos are to come yeah because i said to muhammad how do they cut the inside yep he said they scoop underneath it mm -hmm. and i'm like i need to see pictures of this yep Look at that. That again lends to what you're saying. It's like a sonic tool. It's like they've gone. Drrr, yep. Drrr, drrr. You know, like that's the only. There's no chisel, magical chisel in the world mm. that is going to do that. Well, and the chisel is the wrong size for something that's handheld. Yeah, and and, and what and how? I mean, it's hard to sort of get a um, how wide they are. Like, there's no there's no person sort of standing. No, there there's no person. Reference. But if you reference it just off the pure size of the of the stone, of the stone mm. they're large. Mm. And if you think about like if you're chiseling with um, a, a hammer and chisel, mm -hmm. well, you have to be able to hold those instruments in your hands and and, and swing them and swing them. Yeah, so you're not going to have a tool that makes a mark that large. Inside each one of those scoop marks, mm -hmm. there's going to be the smaller marks of the actual chisel tool. And it's one motion. If you look at that picture there, it's one motion, how they've yep. gone down and they've straight dug line, it out. Straight down the side of, dug of it the out. pillar. They've yeah. dug it out, right? Hell. But that is the interesting one there. They obviously start, that's the, I'm pretty sure that's the, the point. That's the point by the looks of it yeah All right so they've actually started to refine the point yep so now they're using the tool to go like that yeah now they're going in underneath All right yep i mean how can you explain that it's very 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 i can't it, it's got it's some sort of thing that changes the matter of the stone and makes yeah. it be it able to dig through granite like matter. butter yep that's yep. the only way like, look at that, you know? And again, that's rose granite. You can see that there. Mm. So again, that's rose granite. That's one of the hardest stones on the planet. Yep. It's up there. And the way, the way in which the, the, sh the shape, like, like we said about a scooping, mm. a scooping um, shape to those, because all of this has been buried. So it's not, as I'm getting at the fact that the edges aren't as angular as fractured stone would be. Definitely not. There's, it's smooth. It's smooth. It's, it's round. It's, it's like it's yeah. It's, it's the it's edges scooped. are round off, yeah. rounded off, yeah. which lends me to move towards um, some kind of flow, either from air, yeah, air, sonic, or air, sound, like, vibration, like, something like that. If you that. think about sand blasting, right? Sand yep. blasting will smooth over edges. Mm -hmm. Water will do the same thing, mm -hmm. smooths over edges. Vibration, because because the um, the actual cutting is like imperfect, so you don't get those sharp edges, which yep. is like there. All of the edges have rounded over. Yeah. Mm. It's... it's like you said, it's it's very interesting. It it twists your mind, doesn't it? It, it does. twists your mind most definitely. Yeah, you know, and I and I I don't again. 
I don't know. But to me, like, there's no tool that we have now that could do that. No. To rose granite. No. Or maybe we do, but it's just in the hands of jewelers. Yeah. On a very small scale. Yeah, on a very small scale, like that sonic <laughs> drilling. All right. That was a Serpent Brothers episode, so have a look at that one. But look, that's. I just wanted to touch on a few little things in Egypt. And more to the point, there's plenty of avenues of discussion. Uh, obviously, exploring the connection with Australia is, is, in the, is in the top of the list there. However, there's so many other questions that need to be asked. And we're privileged to have a bloke like Muhammad give us a perspective. Dude, that. that was a leg up and a half. Mm. You know, Muhammad's just amazing. Mm. So, mate, we finished our little trip and we come back to a land down under. And as you know, the discoveries that have happened over the last couple of years here through the podcast and through some of our associates of the podcast are a bit mind-blowing. And they're beginning to put together a larger picture. But what I'd like to do tonight is I'd like to share in detail what we found up at Gimpy. Yep. Which it wasn't a lot. However, probably the best piece is this here, which I dubbed the preparation stone. Why I called it the preparation stone is that there's supposedly a mix of plants and uh, the prickly pear, which is all over the Gimby Pyramid, is one of the plants, and there's another two. You mix them together, and it creates an acid that melts stone. Right. Okay. And the reason I call this one the preparation stone is it looks like that's what they've done here. Okay. You can see there that they have prepared something on the end of this stone. Mm-hmm. And you can actually see where it's worn away in rings. Yeah. Whatever that is. Yep. Okay. And then you can see the top right there. They've sharpened something. There's two pull marks there. There's one horizontally and there's one vertically. Yep. Looks like they've sharpened a tool or they've done something. They've sharpened something or they've, they've dragged something through a groove there. Yep. And then in the corner, they've had a test cut. And, yep. you, and, because, and you can see it's a test cut because it goes longer than it goes wider. Yep. Right? You can see how it's cut out there. Mm -hmm. That, to me, was unequivocal evidence of that that type of cutting or that, that type of method, which is well known. Uh, it's, it's an interesting concept. I don't know what the – there's obviously there's the, the, the prickly pear and then there's two others – and I don't know what they are, because if I did know, we'd be, we'd cutting, be cutting stone. We'd be cutting stone in the backyard. <laughs> However, that to me was one of the more interesting finds that we found up in Gimpy and does lend to the fact that potentially they were cutting stone on the site there. Yep. Okay. That was another interesting piece there. It's basically just a cutout. And you can, that's a bit more, I dug it out. Mm, looks quite symmetrical. It's quite symmetrical and it looks like it has been cut. Yep. Okay, again, the, the, the vertical line goes deeper than the horizontal line does. So like they brought it down and then almost like a, a saw cut for want of a better description. Yep. However, again, that to me was evidence of cutting. This one too. I mean, this one was, it is very uh, regular shaped. Well, when you look at that, you know that t straight away it takes me over to the to the church. Yeah, in Gimby, exactly the yeah. wall that's stacked over there. You know the way in which the edges are all cut f very precisely. Yeah, except the polygonal masonry over there, it would be more intricate. Mm. Like what would be what would have been amazing was if that stone had multiple edges on it. Yeah, you know, like a T stone or a you know if it had a had a right angle in it or well, I something think, like that. I think, again, in a lot of these sites, we find the stuff that's unfinished. Yeah. Because if it was finished, it'd be in the wall. It's in the wall. It's yeah. used. Yeah. 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 I want to debunk something with you. Yep. Now, this is the photo that is bandied about over and over and over again, mm -hmm. that that is the top of the Gimpy Pyramid. Mm-hmm. 
Look in the background. There is no mountain range behind the summit of the Gympie Pyramid. Hmm. It's not the Gympie Pyramid. Yeah, I don't know. I, look, it's very hard to work out what any of that is in the background there. It's trees. It's, this is an old photo, right? Apparently, this is a photo from the late 1800s. Okay. But that is trees in the background. Yeah. Okay? That is a range in the background. Yeah. We've both stood at the summit mm. of the Gympie Pyramid. You do not see a range of trees. No, not like that off in the distance. No, you don't at no. all. So I'm saying, and this is pretty exclusive... That the photo that is supposedly the, the summit of the Gimpy Pyramid is not. Because there is no... that That's trees in the background. There is no... You stand at the top of that hill. <coughs> there is no trees. Yep. So th that photo is not right. Okay. So yeah, that that's very possibly some other location. It's some other location. I don't know where it is. Mm. However, it's not Gimpy. Yep. Yep. That's a cool photo. That's an old aerial photo. Yeah. And that's probably how I, you know, you can see that it looks like a pyramid. Yep. You know what I mean? Like there's no, there's no houses or anything there, there. Yeah. And it's standing out by itself. Yeah. Yep. So looking at that looks a lot more like a pyramid with that old aerial shot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there is trees in the background there, but they don't go up like that. No. See that ridge along the back there? Yeah. That's not. That's not that. No. So, yeah, I'm saying that the, the summit photo is not actually the summit photo. Yep. There it is there. Now, the reason I put this one in is that, that we've seen that wall stacking already tonight, haven't we? Mm -hmm. That stone stacking. Yeah. Saw another echo of it in the Bosnian Pyramid as well. Yep. So... You know, I mean, obviously that's a fairly well-known, easy way to stack stone. However, the walls look very similar at Gobekli Tepe. They look very similar at in uh, at the uh, Bosnian Pyramid, and they look very similar here. Yeah. Okay. But there's the money shot. That's Actually, the that, one. that's the money that's shot. That's the money. Right okay. there. Yep. Now, where obviously we we talked at length about um, South American influences. However, at the same time, I'm seeing some very interesting stuff out of Easter Island. Now, I'd, because Easter Island is Easter Island, it deserves its own section. Yeah. So I didn't want to divert to Easter Island from here. Yeah. But in one of the next presentations that I'll do, we'll bring up Easter Island. We'll bring Easter Island into play because it's important. However, the masonry and more, the stuff in Easter Island is more from a size perspective. Mm -hmm. It's very similar. The stones are very similar in size as they are to the site at Kimpy. Yes, yes, yeah. That it's that site's not megalithic by any standard, but it's it's precise. Yes, it's very precise. Yeah, you know. And again, I, I, I will mention that that photo there. I posted that on Instagram, and I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure it's the highest likes I've ever got. And I put, "Where is this?" Yeah. And no one believed it was Gimpy. That's right. Well, no one would have even known to think of Gimpy. When I showed Jock Doubleday yep. these pictures, he was flabbergasted. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 There you go. Because when we see that, we know that there was there was only one civilization that did that. Well, Egypt did a little bit, but not to the extent that South America did. No, that's right. Yeah. But the civilization's the global one. Yeah, the, the, the builder at. culture. The builder culture yeah. is definitely what did that. Yeah. And look, I just wanted, there was a couple other, because that's the other money shot there, the one that's on the angle that goes around. Um, yeah, the bottom on the corner there. Yeah. Uh, the other interesting thing about the deve other development with this wall is that apparently Colin Hayter uh, went and did, because he's a builder by trade, Yeah, he approached the Gimpy Council as a builder and wanted to do an investigation into the historical building mm -hmm. of Gimpy. Yeah. And basically was looking for that. And he says, and I haven't seen his evidence yet, however, he says that the wall didn't come from the site, it came from two other sites that weren't the Gimpy Pyramid site. Which right. is which is interesting because we've had trouble placing that wall yeah. at the site. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a development there. I'm, I'll, I'll update everyone once I get more information. 
But just wanted to show a few of those. I mean, you know, like that one there, it's got one, two, three, four, five different sides. You know, it's supporting... The, each one of those blocks has got multiple sides and it's got multiple angles. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's very impressive stuff. That one in the middle there is pretty cool. You know, like, you, you just don't do that. No one no. does that. No. It's fascinating. But that's about it for Gimpy because we've, we've obviously gone at length about that. But that, that's a few of the things that I found. Well, that just ties Gimpy into the global culture. It does, yeah. Is what it does. Yeah. It, it adds, it says, hey, we've got some stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and it's, and it's interesting to look at, you know, it's, it, it makes you think what, what more is there that we mm. don't know of. And look, I am going to dig into the megalithic walls on Easter Island and maybe do, because we've got so many photos of the wall at Gimpy, do some comparisons. I did start to do that and I thought, well, we're going to go, we're going to go too long. Look, it's going to be a bit of a rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, so that's not for tonight. However, look forward to a bit of analysis on that in the near future. Beautiful. I want to go a little bit left of center now to Australite Tektite. Now... That, as we understand, is not Australite tectite. However, that is the stones that the strong boys have. Yep. Okay. Now, why do I say that's Australite tectite? I say it because of that, because of the one on the left there. Mm -hmm. That is the one on the left there. Yep. Okay. Now, if we are to entertain, well, we, we, we can, NASA documents tell us that there was a, a, a great body in low Earth orbit 780,000 years ago that slowly crashed into the planet. Right. Okay. And the tektite is all these buttons, right? That's the, that's a classic Australite tektite button, right? Mm -hmm. One on the top and two different on the bottom there. But if it's a massive body that was in low Earth, or, low Earth orbit, it all wouldn't have been tiny pieces. Right. Okay. Now... Where I go a little bit woo-woo with it is if we're saying, if we're buying into that alternate origin theory where they were beings from another planet mm -hmm. that used, uh, genetically modified us, etc., cetera, et cetera, they, that they used, you know, and understanding now that they think the best version of, you know, material to build artificial intelligence is actually using silica. Yep. Okay. It's the basis of a lot of microchips. It's, you know, the, the silica, yeah. you know, that that's that what this is, okay? It's high in silica, mm -hmm. all right? Remember, I, I had a very trippy experience with those stones when mm -hmm. I sat in the stone circle. They spoke to me. It was a very, very trippy experience, okay? I remember you telling me the story. You know, however, maybe they imbued the consciousness into the Australite tectite. Yeah. I consciousness information exactly what, yeah we're storing information on silica now yeah yep so who's to say that if they came from a star system far far away they didn't have that ability at the end hmm. to push their energy information whatever you want to call it data data yeah, yeah. into the stone yeah i'm hearing you in some kind of solid state memory something like that yeah, yeah 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 yeah. and that's only based on the experience that i had because it was very trippy like those stones spoke to me mm -hmm. and i can't explain it any other way yeah and when i when i was looking at this australite tektite and i found there's more pieces like that that have that yellowy blue coloring they're not all this mm -hmm. right and then i thought hang on a minute they're not all going to be tiny pieces there's going to be some giant pieces of australite tektite surely you right? would think you would think yeah it's not all going to be tiny pieces, right? No. And that's sort of where it led me down to that. Yep. And just more, just where that tektite boundary is. Mm hmm Okay. So it's majority of Australia into Japan and into, that, that, that's North and South Korea there. Yeah. Yep. Right. That's where a lot of it is found. And it's just, it's just that, that, that story nags at me yeah it nags at me mm -hmm. and i and i will continue you know what tonight is too is a, probably a good representation of how many different various rabbit holes that i'm down at once 
and it's just about but just just the rabbit holes that are out there yeah to be gone down that's, Remember, that's the thing there's the, so many yeah. people doing the same thing everywhere mm. in term and the connectivity of the internet allows us to to delve into each one of them simultaneously and it just open that that's why the opening of the perspective is what's important yeah yeah because it could be it could be anything or it could be everything it's you need to understand and be open yeah and the the bottom line is with this alternative origin story mm -hmm. is there's more physical evidence for this happening than there is that jesus was around yep that's the reality right yeah exactly that's right <laughs> so and it, it just nags at me it just mm -hmm. nags at me from there we head to and obviously kudos to fellow coder and multiple guest mr patterson the lightning place or Standing Australia Stonehenge. Stones. Yep. Okay. And this is more about a larger piece of work that I'm doing in the background. Uh, we will be conducting a multiple day field trip in the coming months, in probably in the next couple of months. Basically, the rough plan, I'm putting it together logistically, but the rough plan is to go down to Gosford, uh, to the Hawkesbury River. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's probably three or four sites there that we need to see. And then we're going to spend a couple of days coming back, basically. Yep. Stopping at um, Kyagra, I think, National Park, and a few other little places along the way. Basically looking for standing stones. Yep. Okay. Um, obviously, there's nothing left at Lightning Place. Hmm. There's nothing left there now. It was bulldozed. It's and it was been dozed. It was yeah. dozed pretty well. But what it is, is it, it, is, a, it is definitely a, an important piece of the puzzle, without a shadow of a doubt. But what we can do, it's sort of, you know, and speaking to Richard, it's it's a bit like the hero's journey, right? Okay, we know this existed, mm -hmm. but it would have been part of a pilgrimage. Yeah. Okay. And that pilgrimage, a lot of that is still actually National Park. Mm -hmm. So there is potential, and apparently talking to a couple of other guys, there is still standing stones in the wild. Yeah. Right? Potentially, ladies and gentlemen we may be doing a podcast in the middle of an ancient stone circle, which would be very cool. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, part of that, I will, I will be packing the gear up for portability and we will be recording while we're down there. Yeah. However, it's, 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 a, it's a hero's journey. We'd love to have Lightning Place around. The reality is it's not. However, there's many other places around it, right? There's the other picture of that. It's very cool what Richard does. I, I, I take my hat off to him as far as his ability to recreate it and he, his ability to use computer programs to do that. It's very cool. Mm. But when we say standing stones, what standing stones? Well, those standing stones, there's three big ones within 5Ks of Mullumbimby. Yep. Interestingly, that one looks like it has got some carvings on it. Nothing concrete. Excuse me. Same as the one on the right. If you actually look, there looks like some deliberate carvings into that too. I would like to get a closer look at both of those and just see what we can see. Yeah. And is there anything to see, I suppose, is the question as well. Mm -hmm. There's some more, right? The bottom right one being the mock henge, the mock stone henge. I was going to say, what, what the hell is that? <laughs> well, that's a pictorial representation. Yep. I actually like the top left one as well because you can see two stones in the background. Yeah. So there, yep. there is stones in an arrangement. Mm -hmm. That roundabout is the roundabout entering Mullumbimby, just for the record. Yeah, I think I've been around that. You would have been around there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's a that's actually the representation. We've said it a few times on the podcast, but that's mm -hmm. the one where the, the guy built a Stonehenge on his property and Richard went to talk to him, asked him why he built a Stonehenge and he thought it was a good idea. He just said, oh, I don't know. I thought it was a really good idea. And then Richard said, where'd you get the stones from? He goes, oh, no, they were already here. Yeah, right. So he's probably built a Stonehenge out of stones that out of were a stones Stonehenge. for a Stonehenge. Yeah. So Where's the stones wanted to be back in a circle, basically. Yeah. There's another couple. And there's another one there. That's a bloke by the name of Robbie. He might meet us down there, and he, he seems to know where some stones are. We're going yep. to do a bit more conversation with him. He's a sand healing guy. He's going to come on the podcast as well, talk to us about sand healing, because I think that's a... 
an untapped thing and there's a lot and the, the sand healing stuff echoes back to egypt as well there's a mm -hmm. lot of rooms with frequency and stuff yep um so that's that's an interesting concept that i want to explore however yeah that that one look at the size of that pillar that's a good size pillar that's a good size pillar you know and that is that's see some of these though, close to four meters yeah tall. some of these though uh there's a and how deep does it go in yeah i don't know there's there's base. There's a place in there. It's like a coffee house and a property and stuff. It might be might be where the mock stone hinge is. Mm -hmm. And this guy's found a heap of stones in his property and stood them up. So that one there may not be in the wild. Yeah. Okay. That one may have been deliberately put up. Yeah. In the you know in the recent past. Yeah. However, there's there's tell of uh, stone circles and bunches of stones in the Kyogre National Park. Yeah. Which we're going to go and try and find. I like this one because it's an old picture. Mm. Okay, it's a very old photo, uh, early 1900s or so. And there's another standing stone. You know, it's it, it. I suppose what I'm trying to highlight here through pictures and through better understanding for everybody is that the reason that I am probably by my primary investigation at the moment is Australia is because there's something here mm -hmm. that we need to discover yeah. and we need to try and join the dots of. And it could potentially be the missing link, right? If we can prove, well, we, in the next part, we're going to prove that the Egyptians came here. That means the Egyptians circumnavigated the world. If we can prove that whoever the builder culture was went through Easter Island and then came and went to Gympie, mm -hmm. that means there was a global civilization, yeah, a seafaring circumnavigating civilization and the other big question with the australia stuff is why was australia left off all the maps for such a long time mm. it was almost like it was deliberately left off the maps there's another guy that i'm talking to who's got some very interesting theories about that um that's not for tonight i'm gonna i'm i'm coaxing him to come on and tell us about it um it's to do with gold yeah you know, which would make sense um you know there's a there's a theory that you know one of his theories is that they used the gold from australia to build the egyptian empire all right and then we had colin say that egypt is a reflection of bambara this this connection with egypt is i think is one of the is 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 the linchpin okay it, this is if we can prove why they were here or at least present multiple perspectives on why they were here yeah i was going to say increase mm. the bandwidth you know we need mm. to fill out find more things because the th everyone goes oh but we've known about the fact that there's boomerangs in egypt for ages and it's like really i've been into megaliths hardcore for the last you know however many years and i've only just stumbled upon it if everybody yeah. knew it'd be better understood mm. so we need more points of data to build a bigger picture yeah and then we can actually seriously have a look at the who what when where why's you know and and just think about the consequences of that right the consequences of the egyptians came here mm -hmm. you know according to the glyphs 500 bc or so yeah before we get to the glyphs though this is actually the first time anyone's seen this this is a utc discovery this is what you found yeah well martin te technically and i will give kudos to martin martin walked over and went oh what's this you might like this truth uh, and then i proceeded to freak out yeah okay this is the imprint the imprint that is uh in the glasshouse mountains yeah now one of the things i do want to do is go back there but what i want to do is i want to go up and down both sides of that creek yeah yep like i want to walk a K in either direction from that imprint or a couple, you know, you know, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just know see if there's anything else. Like I've been a little way down. I've probably gone three, 400 meters one way. I haven't mm -hmm. been too much the other way because it goes under the road. I haven't been on the other side of the road. Yeah. However, the one that's on this side of the road, I have gone down the creek probably three, 400 meters. Yeah. And there's some interesting stuff, nothing too amazing. However, I just, I feel it's like my instinct tells me that I need to go back and spread just out just go further go yeah. further yeah 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 definitely and straight away what gets me with this is the fact that we're looking at right angles precision and pre yeah 
exact right angles mm-hmm. and um, the lack of fracturing or anything like that that you could try to say that it was natural. Yeah. And and the, and so obviously I sent uh, a piece of stone away to be analysed. Yep. And it's a type of sandstone. Uh, yep. This type of sandstone is known to break in straight lines, yep. okay, which we'll see some of this in a which minute. Which so, some of, you can see some cracks yes. through it. Yeah. Which are fairly straight, yep. fair enough. Yeah. But these, these are like melted rubbed cut it's it's something it's There's, it's like it's, it's been melted right yeah, and yeah, basically yeah. what the geologist said is that in order to melt sandstone you need to be at 2000 degrees celsius plus okay so that just just so we can get that into perspective yeah 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 and look i did a um you know fair, fairly good amateur archaeology uh dig at that and you can see look that's so that is the you know, you got the right angle, and then it goes the one to the to the right there. Mm-hmm. Doesn't curve, but it looks like it would have, right? Yes. You can see it started to. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and maybe once upon a time it did, right? Remembering yeah. that water runs over these rocks every time yeah. that creek runs up. Exactly. Okay. So it has had some sort of wash away uh, over the years. Yeah. But this is the other photos that I sent to him, and he. The, the geologist said that this looks like it has been cut in some form. Yeah, like that is not that that little that little the section there, the zigzag yep. section. That's not natural. Yeah, right. So there's, it's an interesting question as to when you look at something like this. Okay, that's not natural. This is that's not. Yeah, what's what? It's hard to under hard to know. Yep. Now, if we go back to they were maybe using the acid technique that we mm-hmm. talked about with the preparation stone before, would you choose a stone that breaks in pretty straight lines? It'd make your work a bit easier if you did. Yeah. You know, 100%. you know what I'm saying? Like it's, well, you could use that, um, that known quality to speed up your process. Yeah. To your advantage. Exactly. Yeah. You know, some of the, and look, that's just, just the perfection of that there. Yeah. Like it, 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 it boggles me still. Yeah. And what is the sunglasses? It's, you know, it was, we call it the sunglasses basically because it's, <laughs> Martin said it looked like a pair of 80 sunglasses. Yeah. Um, however, like, what is that? You know, it, it is an anomaly. Yeah, exactly. No. It's oops there's, up, man. There's a relief there where the nose piece would be. Yeah. You're, yeah. Nothing about it says, feels natural. Nothing. No. It has been in, there's, it's, it is an imprint into the stone of a tool of something, you know. And obviously, my conclusions to that are: it's like this is a meeting place, okay? So surrounding this imprint, there is numerous axe grinding um, grooves. There's you know there's there's the paste grinding grooves, and we we went there yeah. and we stirred that snake up. However, you know there's multiple different versions and it's a meeting place it's almost like on a crossroad it's almost like on a boundary of multiple tribes right Mm -hmm. so it's a meeting place where it was like neutral ground yeah you go and have a bath there you go and sharpen your stones there you know what i mean you might do meetings there yeah if you're going to leave evidence of something that is out of place you're going to leave it at a meeting place that's probably been a meeting place since who fucking knows how long tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of years like what are we actually talking about yeah we don't know millions millions yeah you know exactly and that's the interesting thing and I, I i need to go back there and i need to go under the bridge and up that way and i yeah. need to go the other way a bit further as well just for my own peace of mind so i can see what i can see the only other thing i can think of just while you were talking about unnatural shapes occurring in in the rock yeah it takes me back to the information that you were saying about the fact that it's sandstone. Mm. Sandstone gets created in a depository manner. Yeah. So that's it get the material gets deposited yes, there and then does. then it, it um solidifies over time. So what if there was a tool sitting Something in the Something was sitting in there and has since rusted, decayed mm-hmm. Has, and that was the uh, that was the other um I think Woody was talking about. That that was his when I, he looked at it he's like 
what if it was a, like volcanic or something and there was a tool in the in the in the sludge or whatever yeah. and yeah. basically that tool stayed there and then over time and that's all we've got left of it yeah exactly is a shape mm. yeah it's oops art man that is an out of place artifact it makes 100%. no sense for no. it to be there you're exactly right and there's no studies on this nothing yeah no, no one has noticed it seemingly before us that day yeah or at least no one's hung known, onto it. noticed it and gone hang on a minute what is that that's weird yeah yeah no nah, that's it man probably because it is oops art mm. because anything they were able to put it to didn't fit the timeline well this is the thing i think i think a lot of people look at this stuff that aren't invested into it and go what's that oh that's a bit weird well also it's australia yeah and nothing happened here nothing happened here yeah you know suppose when when the white man came 200 years ago the state of the culture they were just was wiped out they, well that's yeah but what apparently what they found mm. was just a, a very hunter gatherer civilization mm -hmm. you know nothing that's n no civilization mm. in terms of uh housing and built up areas and mm. cities and mm. stuff like that it turns out though there was there was areas there yeah, was exactly. communal areas that's there was right. but all that sort of stuff's been kept it's been just it was destroyed the the transfer of information was destroyed yeah well apparently um colin and the southern united tribes group are actually trying to bring back this information one of the things that i need to go back to this site and actually check mm -hmm. is that at the gosford glyphs you remember those those like circular holes that are all over there yeah right and they're a bit strange yeah and, like, and we're basically told that they were used to round stuff off. That That's the explanation. Yeah. There's very similar holes in the Bosnian Pyramid Complex, and there's very similar holes at Gosford. And what they're actually doing is marking out a star map. Oh. So I want to go back to where this is. Yeah. Take some photos of them. Take some photos yeah. of them and do, do, a bit of, do a bit more field work on it. Mm-hmm. Because if you think when you stand there, what uh, above you is open sky because yeah. of the big rocky plateau. That's right. So maybe it is a bloody star map. Like that's something that I, I it, it came to me talking to Jock actually after yep. information came through Colin and I saw the same things at the Bosnian Pyramid Complex. I'm like, hang on a minute. I've seen those before here. That's interesting. That is very interesting. And that's something that needs to be... Looked, yeah, look, looked into yeah 100%. further investigation yeah definitely so you know again uh, just a presentation on current information however understanding that there's more to come where beautiful we, man beautiful. where where we're going to finish is here gosford the gosford glyphs the hieroglyphs that are present at gosford yep now I always thought they were genuine. Only and look, uh, the the strong boys said they were genuine, and they sort of told a bit of a story about them. However, when a guy, when Muhammad, when I saw that Muhammad knew about them and found out about them, was working on them. That's literally a guy who studied hieroglyphs his entire life. Yeah, and reads them every day. Now, that's an entirely different skill set oh and, yeah and competency level yeah than anything else that has ever been said about these yes 100 percent. okay and obviously that was the the cause for me and muhammad getting together so listen to knowledge of egypt one if you haven't already because we go into this in great detail i'm going to go through some of the stuff he showed me i've also got a paper of his that he sent me but i don't know whether i can distribute it at the moment um it's basically the paper he pre presented on the podcast however it's the entire document all right so i haven't spoke to him yet however this one here okay because if you know about the gosford glyphs you know about the one that looks like a ufo taking off right yep it's not a bloody ufo and you know me i want it to be a ufo of course okay yep but there's two of those and they're upside down boats yep why because the gosford glyphs there's part of the story that we do Tell not the story 
that yep. they tell the story that a fleet of ships they were heading north they got hit by a storm coming across the east coast they tried to turn around and come back and their ships went upside down yep. the other one that is to the right of this one i think mm -hmm. is actually has a broken mast like it has yep. this thing and it's got like a broken mast and that and people have said oh that's like the the exhaust board of the ufo no that is the dude going our ships got fucked up. It was upside down. Everything got broken, right? Everyone knows UFOs don't have exhaust ports anyway. Yeah, that's right, right? <laughs> However, I just wanted to... It's not a UFO, yep. okay? The basic story is clear. That basically, they they were travelling here. Their ships got broken. And that was the last time they were here. And that was 500 BC. BC, yeah. Okay. Here's some of the other stuff there. And this is just some of the examples of the work. There's a hieroglyph that is a engraver's set. And I'll show you off the mic. I didn't put it up here because it was hard. to. I, I wanted to, at the end of 90 slides, I knew we'd be a couple of hours in, which is where we are now. So I couldn't fit everything in. We're going to come back and go over this stuff as new information comes to light. But there, what I want you to have a look at is... That's pretty bloody. That's not, it doesn't look like they're scratching it. Scratch, 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 does it? It looks like they're dragging it through and pretty much just drawing it into the stone. Now, the hieroglyph for the scribe set looks like a soldering iron or something like that. It looks like an object with the button on and off button. I'll show yeah. you later. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Because that's what, when I've been looking at these carvings, it looks like they were done in one pass. Yeah. Yep. That's what's interesting to me. Yeah. It looks like they were done in one pass. See, we can't help ourselves, buddy <laughs> Aussies. Can't help ourselves. I saw that. Man, yeah. that's the first one <laughs> yeah, I saw. Yeah, of course, of course, of course you it. did. We can't bloody help ourselves. But again, it looks like they're done it looks like it's done in one pass. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Look, man, I'm, I'm with you in terms of, yeah, um, the lines look very uniform. Mm. That's what I'm looking for. That's the word I was looking for. Mm. Uniform in their depth and the way in which they're done. Mm. Um, I mean, to think about chiseling these, these in, it's... And the story that to to try and debunk these mm -hmm. about a dude just chiseling away, yeah, creating who who managed to somehow put very accurate hieroglyphs up. According, well, it, it's actually it's it's not that they're accurate. What what actually sold Muhammad, yeah, is that they're inaccurate. It's th this guy's writing shorthand. Yep. And you, the only way you would know that that was shorthand of that time period is if you were in that time in period. In that time period, yeah. And if this was done in the 50s and 60s, there was no professor with the knowledge to actually be able to do this full stop end of story. Yeah. And what Muhammad said is true. It's like no one tried to take credit for it. If you were going to go and do 500 plus glyphs on a wall mm. and not even take credit, just, as, just for what? You know, for yeah. just to, I don't know, like just to mess with people's heads or. So, the fact that we can look, I, I'm, I'm sold. Mm -hmm. They they're genuine. Yeah. That means that in 500 BC the Egyptians came here. Yep. Full stop. End of story. The who, what, when, where, why, is basically the next UTC. Yeah, mystery. that's that's the mystery that needs no. to be solved yeah yeah and the other thing too that was that, that uh and muhammad mentioned is these are cartouches mm -hmm. however these cartouches a cartouche is normally only for royalty yeah but because old mate had just survived uh a ship crash a shipwreck yeah right he decided to put him and like the captain and that in their own cartouches and in honor of them Right. And Muhammad's like, right. in Egypt, you couldn't do that because yeah. it's only for royalty. But he's like, who's going to get them either in the Australia? You yeah, know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and that's another it's thing. The kind that, of thing a survivor would do. Exactly. Yep. Right. And it's just, man, you know, that is the end. 
you would you didn't think that was 93 slides we could we smashed through those so we, yep that's the end that's the end of tonight's presentation obviously with many many more things to go yeah right last one that was a lot my head hurts too <laughs> the craziest thing is we haven't even scratched the surface and that's true yeah and that's you know it's a lot to take in we did punch through that very quickly yeah but there's so much good information in there man so much good things to be unlocked mm. Mm. and it is as always posing more questions than answers but i think we have more knowledge to pose better questions definitely right if you if you think about some of the in-depth stuff and the stuff we discussed tonight like instead of just look oh my god massive stones hang on a minute what is that stone under there doing what's this doing you know let's let's honor the the romans that came here let's look at gobekli tepe look at the you know the, the fill stones what's the difference how did that you know what i mean we, we you, you we're digging deeper yeah we can accept well what's what's the tie between the egyptians to australia mm had they have they been to all the other sites that we mentioned absolutely you know if if they came here if we've got some evidence of them being here in one place at one time yeah where else were they where else were they were they frequent visitors mm -hmm. you know why does the polygonal masonry on easter island pretty much look exactly the same yeah as the masonry on it the church at gimpy yeah exactly you know yeah and that's just another anomaly. There's nowhere else where there's polygonal masonry. Mm -hmm. That's know? right. And some of that stuff is I'm actually looking at the striations in the stone. Mm -hmm. So like the you know the, those gouge marks, look yeah. those gouge marks. Yeah. Some very similar stuff looking at Easter Island. Yep. Right. So it's not only similar size stones and similar building technique. It's, it seems to be a similar similar pattern on the surface. Pattern or cutting technique. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But again, yeah. I'll go through that and have a bit more of a deeper dive. But yeah, brother, that's uh, Megalithomania too. Well, my friend, you've done a lot of bloody work there. That was awesome. It was a great presentation filled with lots of good information and great photos to back it up. Mm. A lot mm. of that stuff I hadn't seen before. Well, that was my aim. That was mm -hmm. my aim to show the depth of some of this stuff now. You know, like obviously when we started here four years ago, we were... Oh, it was the main, it's hard to say, but it was the mainstream stuff we were looking at. Yeah. Main, mainstream alternative, archae alternative archaeology. Yes. Yeah. Whereas what I'm trying to do is in order to refine the puzzle pieces, you need to look deeper. Yeah. You need to be in that observer space. Get off the beaten track. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think the field trips have been very important as well because when you're you know you're digging in the dirt you're looking at this stone stuff you're looking at this you're, you're analyzing the footage when you come back here you're, you're talking you know the, the knowledge that has come through over the last sort of 12 months or so is is, is next level as well mm. and then having that pers those perspectives just keeps adding you know it either makes one dot stronger or it, it, it takes away another one but either way there's something that, when we, we talk about unlocking the code you know i feel like we're on the way we're mm. more than on the way yeah yeah i feel like that australia is the missing link mm -hmm. okay that's how i feel i feel like if we can tie egypt definitely but if we could tie the builder culture from Easter Island or South, well, we can tie South America. There's genetic links in the bottom of South America. That's undeniable, right? That's right. Yep. So we can already tie South America to Australia and we can already tie Egypt to Australia. Yeah. There's your polygonal masonry and there's, there's your hieroglyphs, right? Yeah. If we can prove that, like it's obviously there's a lot of physical evidence we've it, seen tonight. Yeah. However, if we can bolster. Yes. That then means that both of those civilizations were circumnavigating. Yep. Both of those, or was it one civilization? This is the, this is the point, right? Yeah. Are we talking about a builder culture? And there was an article I posted to the page today where it said that the Australian indigenous may have got into the millions at one stage. Mm -hmm. Doesn't surprise me. It's a big country, right? Yeah. And then I started, and, I, and it was actually uh, Mr. Tomlinson that commented, and like they didn't take into account cataclysms like 
I'm going to come back to, and I'm going to try and get in touch with the the person who wrote that paper on the double impact in golf carpenteria. Yeah. I want to actually talk to that. It's, it's, I think it's a lady, actually. Mm-hmm. How I'm going to look that up. I'm going to try and get in touch with her because I want her professional opinion on it. Yeah. Because that's a major cataclysm that happened in Australia, you know, 540 AD, yeah. right? So that would definitely have had a major impact on the population here. Definitely. Right, the double impact being that close. Being that close, yeah. right? Would it, would, it sent the world into a mini ice age, right? For yep. three or four years, mm-hmm. it aided the fall of the Roman Empire, froze everything in Japan, there's tree rings in Japan, etc., etc. So if you're at ground zero of that event, yeah. what's the Like it's fallout? literally a few thousand k's north from here. Yeah. 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 So what effect does that have on, on everything the, around you? Absolutely. Yeah. And what, and what if... if, if if the culture here was still at a level of advancement that was significant at, until that time, how much would have that wiped everything out? You know, like that's a question that has to be asked as well. Yeah, exactly. It's unfortunate, however it happens. Yeah. But if we can, if we can start to join this together, I mean, if you think there's millions here, they reckon a hundred plus million in South America, that means at one point or another, the global population was over a billion. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a comfortable estimate. If we look at all the cities all over the globe, the major metropolises that are under the sand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that means at some point we're over a billion. Yeah. Like that, I would say, is prior to the cataclysm. To the cataclysm, yeah. Right? And then that puts into, then you sort of, then you can extrapolate from there. It's like that then puts into perspective how big was actually what happened mm-hmm. like we we there's n- we don't have any concept mm, it's one of those it's one of those things you can't you can't grasp no. in terms of like you know when you're talking about um astronomical distances and stuff yeah. like that you you can't you can't grasp those and the cataclysm may just fall into another one of those categories it does we we that there's no superlatives, there's no descriptors that can actually truly make well, us understand. Well, where, where I'm going right now is is uh, Randall Carlson's descriptions of the size of the floodwaters. Yeah, it's it, you can't fathom the, the numbers. Yeah. No, exactly. The size of the, yeah, the and tons the of water, of water and, yeah, and the, flow. the amount of flow rate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the same sorts of things. Yeah. And they're, they're only trickle-down effects from... The actual impact, the impact itself. Yeah. that actually set it all off. Exactly. You know, was there a, a blast of of ice that came off it that froze mammoths? You know, I think that's without a shadow of a doubt. Personally, however, yeah, yeah, like those mam- you know, those mammoths and wolves and stuff that uh, rhinos, yeah, and all that sort of stuff, all that megafauna, the North American megafauna. And the, and the, when we they say, I think it was, I'm trying to remember that I'm pulling numbers out at the moment. However, I think it's seventy percent of the megafauna were wiped out at that twelve thousand eight hundred year mark. That means us. Yeah, we are megafauna. We are megafauna. Yeah, exactly. Right. That means seventy percent of us. Yep. Right. We can't understand or fathom if we were to wipe out seventy percent of our population now mm-hmm. globally. Mm-hmm. The people who are left. Are they going to have the technology that we have now? No. no. They are going to be wiped into the Stone Age. Exactly. Exactly. It, reset button. 70% of the population yeah. gone. We but wouldn't... see, that's 70% in the initial impact. What's the ongoing effect? How, what's the percentage of the nuclear winter and the fact that the sun didn't shine for a thousand years? You know, like, how do we grasp that? Not only that, the fact that if you're in a, in a technologically advanced civilization... You might be an artist. Yeah, that's you might, right. You know, you might be a dancer. Yeah. You might be, you don't, you may not know, you may not be agricultural. No, that's you right. You may not know how to farm. No idea. You may be separate from that yeah. life. Yeah. And you go to the supermarket and you buy your food mm-hmm. or whatever you called it at so, yeah, that time. Yeah, go to the market and get whatever you need to get. And it, like, the, the one of the founding statements still rings true. There's answers in the past that can help us in the present and then help us therefore in our future. And that's one of the founding statements of unlocking the code. That's what we're trying to figure out. If you had told me four years ago 
that this is where we would be, I would have been, that's fucking awesome. Because it is. Like, we're not anywhere near unlocking the code. However... No, nor will I think you ever could be. No. You know, we know nothing, right? The one pixel in that screen is what we know compared yeah, exactly. to what is available. That's to know, right. You know, like that's <laughs> exactly that's why the, that's why there's a percentage of the population that that prays for the for the space daddy just yeah. to answer the questions. That's right. Someone who knows it, because mm. the problem is no one will ever we'll truly never know. know anything. We'll never but what know. we can do is is take slivers mm. of information. Mm -hmm. That may help us for the future. Yeah. That's really all you can do. Absolutely. And what I do find, you know, the, the deeper I dig into this stuff and I see the other people that are doing it, is there's actually quite a community and quite a growing community behind these questions. Yeah. And I think what we can do with social media and the modern internet and all that sort of stuff is we can choose to make it work for us instead of us working for it. Mm-hmm. And that's what we can do. And that's what I'm doing. That's how do you think Muhammad came on? How do you think I'm getting these? I'm, I'm beginning to venture out. And the work that's come before that you've been a part of, mate, and thank you very much, stands on its own now. Mm. Right? If someone looks at the podcast and goes, oh, 131 episodes, right? that's not nothing. No. And then they start to listen to some of our older ones of these with megalithic stuff. That's quality work. You go back and listen to that. We're having a good time. However, the information is good. Yeah. You know, and then we're just taking that to the next level. Well, brother, let's wind this up. Have you got any, out of curiosity, because I know I showed you a lot of new information, mm -hmm. what, was the, what was the craziest thing that you saw tonight that you hadn't seen before? Oh, probably the unfinished obelisk. I thought so. Yeah. Um, the the scoops, the how, the how, who, what, yeah. when, where, why. Yeah. How do you lift it? How do you move it? What's your thought process? Are you, you know, all, all of those questions. That was probably the best part for me. Mm. Personally. I thought, I the thought biggest, it would be. Yeah. Not the best like because it was all quality i'm saying the biggest takeaway yeah absolutely yeah that's the one you're going to go home and have a look at that's right yeah exactly and so you should yeah and the thing is we didn't even get to zakara we didn't get to luxor we didn't get to a million other places you know and let's not forget the the list of countries that are there that are there exactly you know, like Malta's another one that we're going to look into. There's a, a the megalith hunter on Instagram basically takes all these pictures of Malta, very similar T shaped pillars mm -hmm. in Ireland, very similar T shaped pillars. These T shaped pillars are turning up as well, yeah. Which again gives us echoes of a the, global, a global, yeah, exactly. Builder culture, exactly. Well, brother, I think that's it. Thank you very much for having me in, man. It was no a very worries, um, any time enlightening talk thank you yeah we'll we'll, uh, we'll sit down well we have got some uh, we, we keep talking about ufos mate that's that's probably going to be our next one there's some it, more stuff coming there's out more stuff coming out yeah, and some good. interesting theories so we'll have a chat about that and uh, sit down again in the near future i look forward to it thanks mate till next we meet cheers